Hey everybody, what's up? Let's do this. And hey, everybody, welcome to Squatch Talk. I'm Pat. Thanks for being here tonight. And over here, we got our guest tonight, Mr. Alexander 
Petikoff from Small Town Monsters. What's up, dude? Welcome to the show. Glad you're here. How you doing, man? Good, good. Thanks for having me on. Awesome to uh, to be on. You know, we've been talking for a few weeks here. Just haven't been able to uh, to find a time being on the road and all being pretty busy. So awesome to be here. Cool, man. Yeah, it's because you're a busy guy. You've been doing some cool stuff. Uh, we're going to talk about that. Uh, welcome back, uh, Tim. Tim Tim is back tonight. My producer, Tim, is here tonight. So uh, welcome back, Tim. How he had a good uh, Labor Day. He went wakeboarding for the first time. That's cool. Yeah, kind of cool. Um, so, uh, yeah, man. Like, dude, what what's up, man? Yeah, you're finally here. Like, uh, what what have you been up to? Like, tell me. Like, let's just go right out of the gate. Like, what what have you been gallivanting around the uh, countryside lately about? Uh, well, about uh, Bigfoot, of course. Uh, <laughs> more, more specifically, we've been uh, filming some Beyond the Trail episodes. So for folks that have seen it or haven't seen it, Beyond the Trail is a Small Town Monsters series that I create along with my buddy Eli Watson and a whole host of other characters, uh, local researchers, people that we talk to. So we, we go to states, we go to different places and we um, try to interview people in local establishments, like if there's any Bigfoot museums nearby or just local researchers and folks that know the areas. And um, it's pretty cool. It's basically it's it's each episode is its own documentary, but it's sort of a recurring series. I guess the only elements that would be the same would be the Bigfoot topic ourselves and uh, kind of the format, the way it works. But we try to keep it as as open as possible and and uh and truthful as possible we don't like to embellish right. or add any crazy weird music or you know oh, that was definitely a squatch there you know is if we don't have anything yeah. happen we will say that if we do you know we put it in there and we don't try to say you know one way or another i kind of try to keep it open-ended and let people make up their, their minds but so basically the past few weeks we were out in colorado and utah and just in ohio just a few days ago just got back from that so um very different terrain, very different Bigfoot stories, yeah, but there's definitely yeah. some right. uh, some consistencies there, obviously, in terms of Bigfoot being in all these different places. That's, you know, so goes the story. So that's the overarching topic is Bigfoot. All right. And where uh, where will where will that content land? So that's that's going to be all on the Small Town Monsters YouTube channel. The YouTube um, stuff. Okay. Yeah. So there's already three episodes currently out. Uh, Bigfoot at Bluff Creek just came out. Uh, two weeks ago, a week or two ago, excuse me. That was the third episode. The first episode came out in May. It's called Bigfoot or the Grant State Bigfoot case about right. New Hampshire. Our second mm -hmm. one was Sasquatch in the Pine Tree State about Maine Bigfoot. And the last one that dropped was Bigfoot at Bluff Creek, which of Bluff course. Bluff Creek. About, yes. Yeah. Which I who enjoyed. Who doesn't lot. know Bluff Creek? <laughs> yeah. And yeah. We, we have another episode I, coming out in the end of September, Bigfoot Mountain, which is about the Mount Hood, Oregon wilderness area. So it's it's kind of monthly. They, each episode yeah. comes out monthly. So, yeah, now, that's really cool, man. Because, um, uh, so it, 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 if we could talk about that for a minute, like the production side of things, the way you land stuff on YouTube, the way you do, uh, compared to like you have other like you have films and docs on other platforms like Amazon Prime, sure. right? You know, Sasquatch out of the shadows. Uh, Champ, right? I think yeah. Champ, Champ's on Amazon Prime too. Is that yep. Champ is on Amazon Prime? It's on a whole host of other streaming sites as well as the other small town. So most of the small town monsters films that come out don't come out to YouTube. For example, they're either uh, well, some of the series like On the Trail of Hauntings that's exclusive to the YouTube members. So you become a channel member and you get access to that. It's kind of like a right. pay-per-view pay sure. type thing. And then yeah, other yeah. films would be DVD and uh, VOD. So video on demand. So that would be, you know, you'd go to, I don't know, one of you, Vudu or one of these other streaming platforms and you'd rent or download the film. And it's a feature film about like the one that's coming out in a couple weeks here called Skinwalker Hallow the Rougarou. That's obviously not Bigfoot related. It's, it's pretty cool. It's got horror elements in it. It's much more, 
about the folklore of what the Rougarou is, you know, werewolf yeah. of Cajun folklore. So there's a lot of different topics, but the Beyond the Trail series specifically kind of was an offshoot of On the Trail of Bigfoot, which has been an ongoing small town monster series directed by Seth Breedlove, who um, founded the company. So it's sort of an offshoot series to that, where we kind of dive a little bit deeper than you can in a, in the form of a film. So, you know, some of the films are about specific researchers or specific areas, like the one we filmed last year on the Trail of Bigfoot, The Journey, which was about Whitehall, New York, and the Adirondacks. So yeah. what's so nice about Beyond the Trail is that we get to do our own thing, but also a lot of the times our episodes cross over into places that might be familiar to people. So stuff that's been featured in the other films. So it's kind of a chance to really, I mean, the way I saw it was a mixture of showing what it's like out there in the woods in the field. I mean, just doing that kind of stuff, having fun, trying out all the different techniques. I mean, there's so many different Bigfoot research techniques out there and mm-hmm. some of them are crazier and sillier than others. And <laughs> yeah. you know, we, just, we try them all. And if it works, it doesn't. I mean, and if not, we're just kind of showing you what, uh, what people are telling us. And, you know, we t- we'll take recommendations from other researchers that, uh, that, you know, we trust or think are, are, are worth, worth their while. So, um, yeah, it's just kind of, uh, I think yeah. more, more so than anything, it's, it's trying to showcase the natural beauty of these areas. Cause so often, uh, these places that these, you know, famous Bigfoot sites like Bluff Creek or, or even places like Maine that are pretty unknown to people, they don't know what the terrain looks like. And we get a chance to really show that nature in 4k and just really, yeah. it becomes more of a nature documentary in a lot of ways, you know, you get to showcase that. And even if there is no Bigfoot, there's still some awesome nature stuff you get to enjoy and. It, it, it's hard to get Bigfoot to cooperate for cam camera, like <laughs> right? Like, like okay, sure. look, look, Sasquatch, I need you to sit here, right, and give your testimonial. Blah, 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 right? Just give us a, give us a peek, yeah. right? No, hey, it's, hey, hold uh, on, let's get the lighting right first, and uh, and okay, here's our here's our shot. Yeah, kind kind of hard to do. I know. Well, see, that, that's the thing. We try to make it so that you could watch these documentaries as not really a Bigfoot person. Obviously, I'm trying to appeal to a lot of folks in the Bigfoot community that, that, that yeah. you know, they, they know what we're kind of doing. But I've talked to so many people who, you know, people that I know outside of Bigfoot that see it and like, oh, my God, I really enjoyed that. They're not into Bigfoot at all. They, they come out of it as, wow, that was a really cool nature kind of documentary. I see what you're talking about with the research and all that stuff. So you can watch it as a non Bigfoot person. And I think anyone can really enjoy it if they just want to have a good time for a little bit. And that's ultimately, you know, we have a good time making them and I hope that comes through in the films mm. as well. And that's the way to do it, man. I mean, you like, yeah, there's like Pierce, you know, Pierce outside the Bigfoot world, obviously dude. I mean, you have a, you have a production company, you have a media company, like, you know, like you're, you're, in the entertainment industry yeah. for, you know, like, like, I don't mean that in a bad way. Oh no, or, totally. Or anything not. like that, dude. It's just, it is what it is. You know, you're oh, trying absolutely. to reach an audience, you know? And I think the way that I've really tried to see it as somebody who's obviously into Bigfoot and I'm into cryptozoology, I'm trying to make stuff that I think I would enjoy watching myself. Uh, as somebody, you know, you were so sick of these reality programs that I think really try the same things always. And yeah we haven't had the good quality stuff since I'd say probably the monster quest day when days when reality TV really came in, that's when it became so much cheaper to do reality shows than it was to have each episode being different and having different creatures or content um, as some of the stuff that I grew up on. Certainly audiences older than me as well would have grown up on. So we're trying to not only appeal to, I think people who like ourselves who would want to see this stuff and truthfully without all the crazy embellishment, but just uh, trying to, find a balance between education and entertaining. So, you know, just if we can talk about some of the, you know, in in Bigfoot at Bluff Creek, I got to talk a little about the drug stuff and some of the things going on in Northern California, you know, true crime. Yeah. The the pot stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Which I find really interesting myself, you know, Mm -hmm. Bigfoot aside, uh, people obviously know that Sasquatch documentary series on Hulu. A lot of the Bigfoot community was very angry about that. Yeah, I, and I, I was like, it. dude, it was that was great content. Yeah, the guy sure. was legit. He was for real. He was literally trying. I mean, unless he's full of crap, you know. Yeah, I mean, I I don't know yeah. that. I mean, I think it was well made and it looks it was good. great. And I I understand, you know, after especially after talking to Bobo, he he felt his interview was a little misconstrued, and they do that all the time in um in with these kind of big Hollywood productions. All so, how they edit you. 
<laughs> yep, exactly. So it's I can understand why people are upset, but I thought it was interesting just as a sociological thing. I mean, I, I like a lot of crime stuff, so uh, you know, the, I can see how they had the Bigfoot thing there, and then uh, it's cool to be able to talk about some of those other circumstances, or even just uh, in some of the Beyond the Trail of stuff, just being able to talk about the nature and. <laughs> Yeah, I, I've kind of we've have a recurring joke now where every episode we try to show moose scat. If we've come across any moose poop, uh, I try to show that because I showed it in the main episode and people are like really upset. They're like, oh, they're showing moose poop, but no Bigfoot. And, and now it's become a running joke. I'm like, every time we we're in an area where moose are, I'm like, if we find the sign, we will show you. So it's just <laughs> I, I, you know, it's to learn a little bit about tracking and that kind of stuff and um, just kind of enjoy the woods uh, aside from just bigfooting you there's plenty of ways to get out there and enjoy the woods yeah i hear you man Oof, a lot a lot to unpack with that like i just want to be out in the woods bro honestly you know alex it is is cool if i just call you alex I oh totally yeah that, that's going. what i go by yeah it's kind of yeah. weird doing the full name it's like I feel like i'm getting chastised or something <laughs> yeah it's like man i i just want to go out in the woods and have fun and Ooh. I don't want to be bothered by them. And that's happened. That's happened to right. me personally. Sure. Uh, and and it's kind of weird when you're just out there like trying to have fun and they come around. It's like, fuck, dude, really? <laughs> like, <laughs> No, I, I, I've, I've had that happen as well. And, and I think it uh, tends to happen when we don't expect it, uh, which mm -hmm. is the strangest part. And, I, you know, just trying to understand what this phenomenon really is and trying to unpack it. And it's... I feel like Dude, almost bro. these things yeah. have control of, of interactions. I don't know. It just seems that way. And most of the people mm -hmm. that I've talked to seem to, to fall into that group as well, where it's like, if, if something happens, it's completely in their control. And I understand that's similar with gorillas and chimps and other primates. They don't, if they yeah. want you to see them, you will see them. If not, you might just get sounds and that kind of stuff. So I don't know. I mean, it's I, I, obviously I, right. I mean, it's been 54 years since the uh, Patterson Gimlin film. Right. And that's the best visual evidence we have of them. In, in my opinion. Sure. Like yeah. hundred percent, you know? Oh, absolutely. I would agree. It's, yeah. it's baffling. I mean, it, it makes you wonder, you know, should we just keep, get rid of all the tech and try just film again? I, I don't know. Well, that is, I, I've yeah. thought about that too. Well, you know, I mean, you know, Doug. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I, he, he actually advocates. He, he says, if you're a researcher, Go out and buy one of those 35 millimeter cameras that are trigger action. And like, you'll probably get better luck with that because you don't have to, you know, you don't have to, you don't have face to fucking swipe like yeah. camera, uh, 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 photo video while you're pissing your pants, by the way. It's like it's um, dark. And then yeah. all of a sudden your, your screen, your face gets blasted with the light of the screen. I mean that, yeah, that that'll give you away pretty quickly. So he, he's actually like, um, yeah, he's, he's, he's an advocate for actually, dude, just go buy one of those, you know, trigger, you can still buy them. Oh, absolutely. You know, there's yeah. hundreds of thousands of them, you know, still laying around and go buy the, the trigger activated 35 millimeter, man. Like, yeah, that's, that's yeah. something that we're definitely going to try to do. You know, I want to try on my own as well, but it's tricky when you're doing a series, you know, you're filming, you have, you have all the cameras and everything. So it's, like the balance of trying to do the research while getting footage of it and, and trying yeah. to make it make sense, you know, afterwards when you're editing it together. Um, but, you know, there's times like just now recently when I was in Ohio, I was up in a tree stand, 20 foot tree stand at night alone. And I had way too much gear on me. I had my backpack. I had a parabolic dish. I had one of the Sony cameras that I'm trying to film myself with, as well as the audio recorder that's recording the parabolic dish and a floor unit. And I'm like, oh, gosh, I should have just taken two pieces because I'm trying to figure out which one to use. And, and I'm getting distracted and I get surrounded by coyotes. I could just see I, I'm looking on the floor and all I can see is the little heads just popping up and right. looking at me. And I'm like, I was so distracted with my gear. I probably didn't even hear them coming up to me. So uh, you make that mistake and you kind of learn in the field on the go what works and what doesn't work. But that was the first time I really just hung out in a tree stand at night because uh, we just happened to have one in the area we were in. Yeah, man. And it, it, it's hard. I mean, you know, like the, the kind of production you do is, uh, I'd say it's small scale, 
Oh, especially, totally. Especially out in the field, yeah. right? You know. So well, well, we're just like it's it's usually only myself and Eli, and maybe if we're with another researcher or something like that, that's basically crew wise. I mean, uh, this last one we were in Ohio, it was with the Seth and a bunch of the other STM crew as well that we were all kind of together. So there was definitely more people, but usually it's just the two of us. So it's, you know, cause people think like a show, like finding Bigfoot, it was just the four of them out in the woods. No, there was actually a lot more camera people around and they had a pretty big crew yep. and that's not a dig at them. That's just how reality TV stuff gets done. Yeah, they got uh, we, bands and trailers yep. and all that stuff. Yeah. And they got people moving yeah. in and out of the woods all night. Well, we're trying to just keep it as minimum impact as we can. I mean, one of the, the Utah one, we backpacked into the high Uinta mountains, which I've been trying to go to for years. I'm a big hiker and backpacker, even, you know, in between big footing, I just, I love hiking and getting out there. And I think it's a great way to see the places you really can't drive to. And we went to the high Uinta mountains and it was just Eli and I for, three, four days out there in the mountains, just on foot, nothing, everything we had with us was what we had to bring with us in terms of in a pack and the batteries, all with the batteries we had, that was it. If, if, if you ran out of batteries, yeah. your camera yep. is dead. There's no charging <laughs> it at the end of the night when you go back to the hotel, like it happens in a lot of these bigger productions. And um, yeah, I'm not trying to say that we're, you know, doing it right or we're, you know, improving on these techniques or whatever. We're just having fun. We're doing just it. doing it. Yeah, it's You're just, just doing it. Yeah, getting the chance to do it. I'm like, yeah, let's do it. And I think uh, I like taking people along for the ride. And it it, it works. I mean, um, I, I'll just say that you know, like it works, dude. Like your your content, uh, it works. W whether it's on YouTube or or on a streaming platform, like to me, it's like at the end of the day, like it's just it's good content. Thank it you. is. Yeah. And. Uh, I appreciate that. Like, I know something about it, dude. I've, I've been around the block, sure. you know, um, but, um, but I also think it's cool that you balance those things out between YouTube, you know, and like you, so you're releasing really good content on YouTube, but then, you know, somebody could, you know, uh, come across, uh, you know, out of the shadows on, yeah. uh, on prime, you know, it's like, oh, uh, dude, I know that, that small town monsters, you know, guy, you know, like, I'm going to check it out. Bank, like, you're, right. you're just doing yourself uh, nothing but favors by, sure. by providing free, like, good free content. And and then you might, you know, pay $2.99 or whatever it is, $3.99. Right. Or it might, if you have Prime, it might be free, you know. I, yeah, I'm it's like comes sure with the membership. Yeah. yeah, Amazon gets, has gotten really weird with their... Cause I know now documentaries aren't really welcome on Amazon for prime. So you can't get them on prime anymore except for existing titles. So it's, it's some weird Amazon. I mean, basically hates small businesses. So they, they want us to all die. That's out weird and, uh... dude. Because like, like that's the one platform where all that shit loaded up. I yeah. Mean, there, there's all kinds of stuff on Amazon prime. It's I know. Like... It's that like a very should, recent they thing. They shouldn't even be there. You know? I know. There's, it's a very recent yeah. thing. I think it was a couple months ago or like four or five months ago that they enacted oh, these policies so where awesome. anything going forward Excellent. is only eligible for being on Amazon. So like you could buy it or rent it for whatever, two ninety nine or however it is. And yeah. then because what would happen is a lot of the titles, so previous Small Town Monsters titles or other independent films go up on Amazon and they're on there for a while until they get some sort of eligibility or process that then allows them to go to Prime. And so now I guess they're doing yeah. away with that because they only want from reputable studios and basically people that probably they invest in or, you know, it's yeah. huge business. I mean, we're talking gigantic billion dollar, trillion dollar corporations. So it's, uh, you know, with Amazon, it's, it's pretty wild. So well, that's why it's good to yeah. be on multiple platforms. So we don't really get because if you put all your proverbial eggs in one basket yeah. and they change their policies tomorrow, it's like, well, you don't want to be left in the dark. I mean, I know some people who have really struggled with that, you know, relying solely on one thing and then that falls through and it's like, they're, they're basically left picking up the pieces or having to close up shop. So yeah. it's uh, that's the way it goes, unfortunately with a lot of this stuff. And uh, no one's on the side of the indie filmmakers really, except for the audiences. So it's uh, it's not easy. And I'm not saying this to complain or get people to feel sympathy or something. It's just the way it is. That's just the way it is. Yeah. yeah. I, I just hope people understand that. So definitely. Yeah. So if you like independent content, support 
um, you know, small town monsters support. If, if there's other people you like that do this stuff, support them. Even if you're just sending them a positive email, be like, Hey, I like your stuff that can make, that can make someone's day. It really can, no especially shit. if they're having a bad day. Yeah. So yeah, you're I'm right about that. About dude. that. Yeah. But preachiness aside, that's just, uh, just wanted to get that out there. Yeah. So see, I could talk production with you all night. And so we're, we're almost having an off air discussion yeah. <laughs> when we should be having an on air discussion, man. So what's, what's up with Bigfoot, dude? Why, why are people seeing eight foot tall men, monkey men in the woods? Like what's up with that, bro? I mean, I personally believe, I don't know if I believe, I, I feel that, uh, there's something that that's producing this. It, it seems that way. I mean, I struggle with it sometimes and I used to struggle with it more before having, you know, kind of strange experiences you can't explain, but certain people that I've spoken to and there's probably a handful um, of people that I've spoken to that uh, really their stories are so convincing. I, I don't know what else they possibly could have seen aside from what they yeah. reported, some sort of large humanoid like ape creature, ape human creature you know, in between uh, that, these people usually don't want anything to do with the story. They want it to remain anonymous. They'll tell you when they trust you, and that's about it. They won't want to go on camera. They won't even want their name associated with it. Uh, you know, sometimes it's even having to pull teeth just to get them to say, well, could you fill out a piece of paper to maybe just so I can put it in my own database just so I can know, you know, I can completely keep your name out of it. So there's a handful of reports like that that uh, I really wonder why, you know, if they, if they were to bring a story like that forward, they would honestly lose credibility in their professional and personal lives. So I, I really struggle to see why they would want to bring that to themselves. Right. Um, especially if it happened a long time ago before there was this modern, you know, social media and Bigfoot craze all over the place when it was a little taboo. And especially I live in new England, so it's not culturally present here. I mean, it's just starting to just like it is everywhere. You know, you'll maybe see some gas stations that sell Bigfoot stuff, but there's no Bigfoot museum up here in New Hampshire or, I mean, there's an International Cryptozoology Museum in Maine run by Lauren Coleman, and that's simply circumstantial because Lauren happened to have moved to Maine. I don't think, you know, culturally it would be there. Bigfoot is not a big draw, tourism draw in, in Maine or in Vermont or New Hampshire. So you hear these stories that happened years and years ago or decades ago. I'm like, why would this person, at the time when Bigfoot was thought to really only exist in the Northwest or maybe in places like Arkansas because of the legend of Boggy Creek, why would they yeah. have this story of seeing this thing while snowmobiling or um, seeing this thing, you know, stealing apples from their tree? Very strange. Um, wondering why that, why they would make these stories up. I, I don't know. I think there's something to it. Mm. There has to be. Uh, I think even if most oh, of the yeah, sightings, there's, yeah, there's something yeah. to it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and, and I'm sure you know that. I mean, you said you've had your own kind of experiences and obviously people experience things in different ways and not everyone's experience is is you know is what exactly they purported it to be but i think that uh enough people are having credible experiences that there has to be something to the bottom of it um so i don't know what it is i mean a lot of people move towards the paranormal a lot of people yeah. think it's very flesh and blood i don't know i mean I've, i most of the reports i've ever heard about seem to be it behaves in a way that a flesh and blood creature would behave it's either trying to run away or get away from people but there's a handful of those really weird reports too that i just cannot explain that and i'm not a huge paranormal or ghost guy or anything i actually don't really like the ghost topic it just kind of freaks me out like the, the mm. concept of, of being in some haunted asylum is just i'd rather be in the woods at night that makes me yeah. much more comfortable. comfortable i don't know it's just yeah. one of those things no. i've never been a fan but um I've right. seen UFOs and I just cannot explain what they are. I don't know. I, I'm not saying they're alien. They just truly fit the word UFO and identify a flying object. And obviously yeah. that's a very popular topic. The government's always talking about it in the media and all that stuff. So it's, it's in people's minds. So maybe there are weirder things out there. I don't know, but I just don't know if Bigfoot fits into that. I don't know what Bigfoot is. Yeah. I, I hear you. Like, and I have a, like, I take issue with that too, man. Just, sort of like you articulated but in a, a little bit different way is that when people when people start describing the woods as being a paranormal place but there just happens to be this undiscovered hominid like 
trampsing around in that same area, I'm like, we'll pick one. Like they can't. It get it is the coincidence of it being both is a uh, yeah. virtual zero, you know, because just an undiscovered flesh and blood Bigfoot would be like off the charts. That's crazy enough. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's off the charts. Cool. Crazy shit for humanity to absorb. Oh, totally. You know, but if you, eh, well, it just happens. They're walking through uh, these paranormal areas where we're getting hits off our spirit boxes and our right. EMF detectors going off and it gets convoluted real fast. It does. I actually have a theory that a lot, some, in, especially in rural areas, you know, haunted forests or places where there uh, supposedly is ghost activity is actually probably Bigfoot activity. Uh, I've heard of stories, especially here in New England, everything's haunted. Everything's old. It's from the 1600s, 1700s. There's even a case here in New Hampshire of this island right off the coast where people reported back in the day a, a, a ghost that would throw rocks at them from the woods. And I'm like, what does that sound like? And, I, and I've heard of other stories as well of local haunted spots where people get things that happen to them. They'll hear wood breaking and r the rock throwing seems to be a common one in some spots where it's like, that sounds just like big purported big for behavior. So maybe yeah. how, how elusive these things are, maybe that's what's going on. I don't know. Maybe that explains some ghost stuff. I mean, they're ghostly. I mean, there are like, there's no doubt in my mind, you know, like Alex, like, they just, they own us in that environment. Completely. Like, it has to, I mean, that has to be what it is. You know, or it's something that we don't understand. Right. right. Like, to me, it's one of those two things, too, because otherwise they'd be in a zoo. <laughs> yeah. Know? like, And, and, th and that's the know. thing. I mean, I agree. I think that that's why I believe that most of the encounters happen to happen it's on their turf. I mean, ju just like using, if we really want to be sticking to the ape example, and I'm not saying, you know, Bigfoot is, is an ape identical to a gorilla, you know, I'm not, not necessarily, right. just, I think, just a, I think uh, some kind of primate. Yeah. Even it's just an example. Us, I mean, yeah. those researchers that went looking for, you know, people like Diane Fossey and others who went looking for gorillas and chimps, they said it would take them weeks until they even saw one. It was, it was always some kind of subtle noises or movements these things were completely owning their environment yeah. to the detriment of the humans. It seems to be that way with, uh, with Sasquatch as well. And uh, where you, you take the best woodsman and basically that's, that's what these things seem to be. I mean, there's a couple examples. One, the story of in Maine, and this was a human being who managed to evade capture for, I mean, so long. He was, this, he was known as the Maine hermit. He lived in this little area in, in South central Maine, he, I know who you're talking about. He went off the grid in like the 80s yeah. and, and got caught in 2006 or seven yeah. because he was breaking into cabins. He was at night. breaking into cabins, yeah. stealing food. Exactly. Because right? yeah. there was, you know, it's as, as, as skilled as humans guy. might be in the woods. And they, uh, is he still in jail? I think they locked him up. I don't, I was like, man, that was a, that was a tragedy. The guy clearly yeah. had issues. Um, but I think the example is, you know, he was a human being and he wasn't that far from civilization centers where he was yeah. able to stay elusive and, and they, they described, I remember the, it was the main wardens, right? They were featured in that show, uh, Northwoods law, uh, yeah. which has since moved over to my state of New Hampshire. But they talked about that even on the show, I believe where they talked about, yeah. you know, when they broke into his cat in his village or his little thing that he had going his shelters, it was like something out of the jungle book or Robinson Crusoe. It was this shanty village and you couldn't see it from the top because he had dis he disguised it and had all this debris and everything. And, that's what yeah. special forces mm -hmm. type people do. And it takes me back to when I was uh, in, in high school, I did this naturalism program and we used to do tracking animals and learning different outdoor skills. And uh, we had to do this practice based off of a native American kind of like concept called the, the secret spot or your sacred circle where, y you know, when you're in your room or your office or your house, you know, what's there. So if you wake up at three in the morning, the lights are all off, you can navigate your way without, uh, tripping on something you can kind of feel your way around and if something is there that doesn't belong you should know it the yeah. idea is you take a spot in the woods uh you know a 30 foot circumference or whatever and you you know that spot intimately you know if anything's changed so we used to do that exercise pretty often during this class you know three times a week we'd go out there and i'll never forget this one time just shows how oblivious people are i'm sitting there in a red sweatshirt i mean as obvious as it could be it was right after the leaves had fallen in maybe about november 
I'm sitting on this rock and I see a group of underclassmen walking on the trail, which was about 50, 60 feet from my, uh, my secret spot, right? Because we're dealing with a couple hundred acres there and we really had to know it was like a park uh, in, in the area. And I see these underclassmen walking by and I just sit on this rock and kind of hunch over with my red sweatshirt. I thought for sure they would see me. Not a single one of them saw me. And I was amazed. Wow. I'm like, and then I went up to him afterwards. I caught up to him. I said, did you guys notice me there? He said, no, where were you? <laughs> and it's just amazing how oblivious we as people can be to something as obvious as that. So let alone imagine a creature that is an, 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 adapted to its environment might just sit there. So there's a story from here in New Hampshire called the Wood Devils. It's an old logging story up in the northern parts of New Hampshire. It, the creatures were described as tall hairy and covered in gray hair and you could almost walk into one before you saw it so you think about these things maybe just going full scarecrow mode and just completely being still uh, i i think they can outlast us anytime in the woods outpatient us so to speak so ah, yeah. you know we get frustrated like come on do something and this thing can stay there like a statue for an hour yeah yeah there's something going on like that obviously i mean again it has to be like the yeah. The, the evidence is already in on that. It's, as far as I'm concerned, the data is clear. Yeah. You know, from... Uh, I, I just go back to the Patterson Gibbon film, like that time frame, so 50, 54 years, Yeah, uh, they would be in zoos. Sure, like absolutely. Would be. Like, the, in, in that time, that hasn't happened. Dude, like, they're either... Like, they can go poof, you know, <laughs> and or what portal their way in and out of shit, or they're just that fucking good. Right. Out there, there's know? really not any other alternative to explain why there's not there's as not. more evidence or, you know, like you said, a body because, uh, you know, you have all these people out in the woods. There's millions of hunters every year. I mean, I know that number's diminishing. If you look at just the amount of people getting involved in hunting and outdoor sports, it's going down over the years. And oh yeah, I think a lot of people talk about that in terms of, like 200 years ago, 300 years ago in the North American wilderness, you still had in some areas, some of the native tribes, you know, still out in the woods. You had the mountain men, people that lived off the land. Now most people are going towards cities, urban areas, suburban areas. And then you have uh, less and less people hunting and, and utilizing the land. So maybe that, and we've seen the return of many other species to areas like New England and down south as well, where you're starting to see bears and moose move back into their native ranges and mountain lions some would argue i mean i've i've certainly uh, experienced that as well a little bit with a project that i did a few years ago called lions of the east so uh, perhaps these things have expanded their range a bit i don't know perhaps there's not that many of them and they just happen to be in these pockets because there are some pockets of incredible wilderness and i think that's what on beyond the trail more than anything has has shown that you know, in parts of Northern California, even in the Colorado Rockies, uh, up here in, in New England, there's some untouched territory where there's already gigantic animals existing. You know, people say, well, how could something so big exist? Well, 1,200 moose, there's 70,000 of them in Maine. I mean, I, I encounter them regularly in my spot in New Hampshire as well. Really? They're, they're all over the place. I mean, there's certain environmental factors that will affect them and diminish their numbers. But and they're Yeah, they're huge. They're, they're monsters. They're so big. People they're, do... Yeah, you, you got to understand, dude. You're Alex. You're in a special position to see a moose. Oh, Most yeah. people in the U.S. will never see a moose. Oh no! And they I know people who so live in New England. Big. Yeah, like, I, I know people who yeah. live here in New England who have never seen one, uh, which is uh, unfortunate because I guess I've just had really good luck of being out in the woods and seeing. Um, there's actually this area called Moose Alley up in northern New Hampshire, which supposedly is one of the largest concentrations in the lower 48, where last summer so of 2020 in june i saw probably 12 moose within the span of 24 hours just wow. by going out at the right conditions you know around dusk or in the morning and you see all out of all of them i only saw one bull moose with the huge antlers the males everything else was either a male with young antlers or a, a cow with uh with uh with her young but um i've seen moose out in in the Colorado Rockies, when I was just there now, we found moose scat in both Utah and Colorado. And I think it's just because I'm I'm used to seeing moose sign now, which is really cool. But like you said, they don't exist in most of the U.S. It's mostly yeah. just the northern states and then down into the Rocky Mountains 
uh, but most places don't have yeah. them. And I tell people those are bigger than Bigfoots. I mean, I, I don't think Sasquatch. They're so huge. Are, I've heard people say, you know, their Sasquatch must have weighed 2,000 pounds. I'm like, that just seems ridiculous. Oh, I yeah. think people no, are very no bad yeah. at judging weight. So yeah. I think um, yeah. I think Sasquatch. I mean, I, I'd be surprised if there was a Sasquatch that weighed more than twelve hundred pounds. Oh yeah, like I yeah I I would I, I agree with you. Like I I wouldn't even put it at twelve hundred. Yeah, that yeah. would be like on the on the high end because yeah, uh, you know like muscle paper. is heavier. Obviously, if these things are as muscular as they are, I mean that's the thing with gorillas, right? For uh, they're on average a little bit smaller than the average adult male human uh, height wise if they were to stand on two feet, but but they're they're like three times stronger because they're just yeah. they're just yeah, yeah they're they're yeah. huge and muscular so muscle i mean as we know humans that are bodybuilders those guys are would be considered morbidly obese but it's because they have so much muscle like arnold schwarzenegger right back in his prime um he would have been morbidly obese i'm i'm technically overweight in my in my height range but you know that's uh, you know like what muscle makes up for it and bodybuilders are huge in that category so I hear, you know, these reports of these Bigfoots that look like a bodybuilder kind of thing. So you'd imagine that thing probably is not light, especially for the impressions supposedly that are being uh, left. But, you know, I found the same thing with moose impressions. I'll find them you know, sometimes six inches deep if it's the right conditions. And if they're running and all that weight just happens to step down, I mean, it's distributed yeah. between four legs, but definitely interesting. So I don't know, like I said, it's, it's cool to have moose around and uh, be able to compare um, because that's, if you get a video of something that's really huge around here and you don't know what it is, it's either a moose or maybe it's a Sasquatch. I don't know. Because there's nothing else really in that size cat. Right. But they, leave, they, they do leave different tracks. Oh, of course. Yeah. yeah. Well, for example, like I bring that example up in our main episode of Beyond the Trail Love, we tried a technique that Doug Hycheck recommended to us, uh, setting up a surveillance system around our camp. So you had our tent and then we had four cameras set up in different directions. So you had... A th basically 360 coverage and you know one was disguised in a backpack another one was in a potato chip bag the other one was in a tree so you kind of try to disguise them a little bit yeah. we had something the last morning on the edge of our camp and it's a very pixelated video walk in this swamp right behind our camp and you can just see it. it's almost so pixelated it's hard to see i personally think it's a moose but uh the, given the size because it was pretty big it's either a moose or a Sasquatch. There's nothing else it could have been. I do think it's a moose though, just because I could see the the kind of the skinny legs as it was moving. So, which uh, makes okay. sense. That area was inundated yeah. with moose. I mean, that's that's legit. The the most yeah. amount of moose anywhere outside of Alaska. Well, in in the U.S. at least, Canada has a lot, but um, that's what it seemed to be. But when you get to that height class, that that size class, I mean, there's only really that that possibility because it's not a black bear. Because the bears, yeah. you know, as big as they get they're not that tall here. Yeah. I mean, moose can stand up to five, six feet, just, you know, from, from hoof to, uh, to the head there. Yeah, they're impressive. so big. I mean, they're yeah. way like take the biggest horse you've ever seen in your life and, you know, add what 20%. Oh yeah. Maybe, maybe more. Yeah. They're like giant like, wild Pleistocene looking horses. That's yeah. I mean, even seeing the, the females, which I've seen the most of is they're, they're impressive just the way they look. I mean, we had one last summer in Maine also in the same area. There's just so many of them. Uh, six in the morning, I'm camping with my brother and he wakes me up. He says, do you hear that? It sounds like there's an elephant running through the woods. And there was enough, <laughs> there was enough light that I could see the silhouette as they ran past our tent. I just see this massive form and I have one hand on my 12 gauge shotgun. I'm like, Oh, please don't, don't fall in the tent. Don't, don't do anything stupid. And I could hear them go down to the water splashing and I'm trying to unzip the tent. I couldn't get it open. So I ripped the, the rain fly and I just stick my head out the bottom and I see this huge mama moose and her baby. She takes one look at me like this, uh, darts right across the river snorting and runs into the woods and you could, you could hear them running. I mean, they were, they were trying to make a point like, don't, yeah. don't mess with me. And I'm like, yeah, I, I respect you. You do you, I'm going to do me. <laughs> Yeah, dude, like, you know, uh, Les Stroud, like his, his, the, uh, this, the, the scariest, most deadly thing that ever happened to me in the woods, Les Stroud saying this was when I got chased by a male moose. Yep. Oh like, my gosh. Period. Like, yeah. Nothing to do with Bigfoot, nothing totally. to do with lions. Like, you know, Les, dude, he's been all over the world. Oh, for sure. That you guy know? is as tough as nails. I mean, and he's, and he's like the scariest thing that ever fucking happened to me in the woods was when I got chased by a fucking, uh, a male moose. 
Yep. I mean, that's what I'm most worried about when I'm in my neck of the woods. That's what, you know, that's why people are packing shotguns or, or high powered revolvers. Uh, and, you know, let alone in a place like Alaska where the moose up there are the largest of all the moose subspecies. So not only have that, you got the grizzlies, you got everything. Um, but, uh, yeah, the moose are by far the most concerning bears in around here. We just have black bears. So they're really not, Unless no, it's a you huge just, you bear. yell at them, they run away. Yeah, yeah. the only times yeah. I've ever heard of attacks is bears that right. are so big that they know that they're big, so they get yeah. kind of an ego to them, or they're just used or to people feeding are feeding trash. them. That's exactly it. They're yeah. they're used to people feeding them, or they dig mm-hmm. through hotel trash. Like we get that problem mm-hmm. a lot in some mm-hmm. of the touristy areas of the mountains, where you know, unfortunately, these bears then have to be put down by the the warden services because. They're been, so used to people. They're, they're not habituated. Yeah. 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 So it's, yeah. A, it's, a, that's a human issue more than anything. It is. Unfortunately. But, um, yeah. Moose are, moose are awesome. I love them. They're like my spirit animal. I really say that because I, I, I love being able to see them from a distance and just enjoy them. But, uh, I, you know, I would not want to catch one on a bad day. No, you don't. <laughs> I mean, either, bro. They're huge. They're, they're monsters. Yeah. They are. Like you said, man. Like, so let me ask you this. Um, just again, shift gears back to Bigfoot. Sure. Uh, man, I can talk wildlife and Dude. production with you well, yeah, all then, night long. And you know what? It That would make a great Squatch Talk episode. But we do have to talk about Bigfoot. Um, What do you think about their, uh, like, um, how how they could be spread out around the U.S. and population numbers? Do you, I mean, do you have any thoughts? Obviously, dude, there's no right or wrong answer. It's not a trap. It's so, it's so tough. I I feel like, I mean, on the low side, probably maybe a few thousand throughout the U S and that's uh, throughout North America, I should say, not just the U S I mean, you have areas where there's better habitat than others. So uh, Canada, of course, I mean, there's just so much territory, even here in Northern uh, Quebec, another country above Toronto in in, in Vancouver, you know? yeah. Yeah. And most yeah. of the Canadian population lives within a few hours of the U.S. border. Yeah. And then you just have all this territory. I mean, Quebec, Ontario, some of these, uh, you know, the Yukon, all these places, Alaska. Yeah, I mean, it would take you five hours to fly across it in a, oh, it's, it's crazy. In a, it's a nuts. jet airliner. Yeah. So in a place like that, I mean, a place like Snow Grove Lake in that surrounding area, you know, where, where Doug yeah. had a lot of that stuff going on. I mean, there could be anything. There could be tons more of these things out there. I think in other areas... You do have an, across the U.S. though pretty good habitat. And I think a lot of people that maybe aren't from the states that are from Europe and other places, and you know, I have family that's from over there, and they, you know, they really scoff at the idea that something could be hiding out there. But you know, then again, they don't know that there's giant moose and other critters running around. They just they go into the woods in Europe, and it's just they don't have to deal with that. Yeah, Here you have these pockets of wilderness. Yeah. You know, even down south uh, in parts of Louisiana, Florida. I went camping last winter in the Ocala National Forest in Florida, and I was, I'd never been camping in Florida before. You know, I, I went as a kid to like right. the beach and, you know, the typical Florida stuff, but I would, this was like real wilderness in Florida. I'm like, this is actually impressive. And this is where people see mm-hmm. mountain lions. They see the Florida panthers down there as well as bears. So there's habitat for other creatures. Uh, but across the U.S., I think you have, like I said, these pockets where the Midwest, it seems to drop off. And, and the biggest interesting factor to me has been looking at the average precipitation maps across the Mm. U.S. So you look at um, where the most rainfall is or precipitation, whether that be snow or or basically where trees and and mountains and that kind of terrain is. And you have, uh, if you look at a map of supposed Bigfoot sightings, they almost overlay perfectly to the the way the rainfall and precipitation works. So obviously the Pacific Northwest, the, the rainforest areas seem to have the majority of the sightings very viable habitat then you have the rocky mountains you have down south uh in the swamps and into florida and then the whole appalachian that's where it seems like most of the sightings in the east coast take place the whole appalachian chain yep. dude it's everywhere no I, I mean i don't know how many times you've been to the appalachians it's it's, it's actually very very remote oh it's crazy and that's actually yeah. where i mo- where i do most of my hiking up here in new hampshire this is the northern part so from basically starting Connecticut into Massachusetts, Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine. That's where you have the ending spot, ending place of the Appalachian yeah. Trail. That's some of the most remote parts of the entire East Coast. I mean, northern Maine is the least inhabited place anywhere east of the Rockies. 
crazy. Um, but all up and down, I've, yeah. I've hiked parts of North Carolina and Tennessee as well. And I've been down in parts of Virginia. They're, the habitat is very similar to how it is up here in the Northern Appalachians. And that's where a majority yeah. of the Bigfoot sightings tend to be is along those mountains, the Smokies, obviously. And then you have a couple other places. It seems the Midwest, it drops off, but you have obviously uh, uh, in Oklahoma, the, the Wichita's, there's some sort of mountain and forest ranges, but yeah, that's where it seems like it's all concentrating. It's around either around mountains or swamps. Exactly. Like vast tracts of forest. Yeah, wet, think. forested areas. Yeah. With terrain. With terrain. And you don't, you don't see it as much for in the most place like Iowa, you know, or, yeah. or Kansas. I mean, I just drove through Kansas for the first time coming back from Colorado and holy crap. Oh, yeah. In, Forget Kansas, dude. <laughs> it was like, there's nothing yeah. there. I'm like, dude, I, 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 I'm not, I, I can't stand flat. So I'm a mountain guy. If I don't yeah. see any hills, I get kind of all weirded out. So, um, you know, I like going down south and seeing some of the terrain in Florida, but it's just so flat. I couldn't do flat, it. Yeah. I couldn't do it. But uh, yeah, that's where it seems like it's concentrated. So I would say probably there's probably a few thousand of these things. If there's the amount of reports we're getting and obviously not every report is credible. And I, I discount the ones that are, it was so far that, you know, they could barely even tell what it was. But even if you discount a lot of the ones that are questionable or maybe misidentifications, you're not saying the person was doing it maliciously, but they just happen to misidentify it. Like that happens. I mean, the, the smartest the people can be fooled by, uh, tricks of light and that kind of stuff but the really credible sightings if you look at some of that it seems you know uh there's there's probably a fair number of these things out there and and again a fair number doesn't mean there's 10 in like a five mile radius there, there seems to be pretty loosely uh thrown about because you do have like like i was saying again to bring back the moose example in maine there are seventy thousand moose supposedly uh, so that's a lot. That's the highest population outside of Alaska for the U.S. Uh, and you don't see these things all the time. I mean, you do sometimes see them, but I know people who have been going up there for years and haven't seen one for whatever reason. So if you had maybe, let's say, 20 Bigfoot in the entire state of Maine, that is a massive area. Uh, you could probably go your entire life without seeing one or finding evidence of one. And some people claim to have had encounters and most encounters, like 70, 80 percent, seem to be complete chance it crossed the road or I saw it when I was hiking, you know, these yeah. people didn't go out looking yeah. for it. They just happened to be at the right place and, at the right time. And that's the majority of encounters. I think yeah, is, exactly. Uh, I, I didn't know anything about Bigfoot, but I saw this thing and that's the only word I can like put to it. Sure. That, that must've been a Bigfoot, you know, right. that happens all the time, dude. Well, see, and, and, and that's the thing, I think, with the research is you try to put yourself in a situation or a place where maybe something might exist. Like you try to look at other factors when you're picking an area, say, well, does this area provide cover? Does it have other large animal species that exist that might be able to thrive here? And then, you know, see if anything happens. If it doesn't, I don't think every time I go in the woods, there's a Bigfoot running around. Right. It's certainly been a few times where I suspect there was one, but I have no way of proving that aside from the way I was feeling and the way others with me had, you know, have had things happen and, mm -hmm. you know, were able to corroborate. Did you hear that? Did you, you know, when you see something kind of getting thrown in your direction, I mean, it's really, when it gets that to that, you see something getting thrown. I mean, there's really only a couple possibilities for what that could be. And uh, uh, if it's a person, they're pretty ballsy, you know, coming yeah, up and very ballsy. people in the woods and messing and, with people. And there. how, yeah, how did they get out there? How are they out there without any light source? And yeah, that's what's weird. You know, all so, that, yeah, like. But but like I said, it's it's far from every time we go in the woods, there's a Bigfoot running around. As much as we'd like that, we can't let ourselves fall for that kind of, uh, the, what we call Bigfoot on the brain, right? Everything yeah, becomes yeah. Bigfoot. And I think, I think a reason why you get a lot of, the craziness in the Bigfoot community and, and people who go out there and are become squatch whisperers or whatever, like they have encounters every time they go out is because there's been a lack of solid evidence. I mean, there has been evidence. And if you look really deeply, there is, I think a good amount of evidence out there, but it's just not, a, you know, people get frustrated and I think they, that leads a little bit to the embellishment. And as we know, Bigfoot hucksters and hoaxers are a dime a dozen that's, there's money in it right does not help at all yeah. but uh, that's just going to happen when you've got a topic like this it happens in every other mm -hmm. paranormal subject out there whether it be ghosts or aliens or yep. me psychic mediums or whatever you want to call it there's always going to be people who take advantage of it and uh unfortunately a lot of good natured people fall for that kind of stuff um 
just the way humans kind of suck. I, I, I think we all we, we all kind of yeah. know that. Dude, I hear you, man. We 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 talk about that here on this platform sometimes. So, uh, you know that that kind of you know you know talking about that part of it is is it's uh, it's allowed. Crucial. It's allowed here. Oh, it's crucial, and, and 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 you know, I'm. I think it's. Uh, you can't talk about the Bigfoot subject without the people involved, because we talk about, you know, whether you're talking about hoaxers or even the four horsemen. There's always these characters involved, right? There's people. Yeah. Oh, this guy doesn't like this guy because of this reason, right? Or oh, if you mention me, don't mention me to this guy because this guy doesn't like me because of this that I said. You know, and that that becomes part of it. And I have some joke on the more filmmaker side. I mean, I've talked to this with, uh, talked about this with other filmmakers. We say you could, you could just make documentaries about the, the insanity that is within the community. And you that could. would be a sociological study. I mean, and people have done stuff like that. I mean, there's been documentaries about some of the, the hoaxing characters and, you know, some of the ones that, you know, if I were to say their names, you know, Rick Dyer and Tom Biscardi, those kind of guys, right. people all kind of instinctively roll their eyes like, Oh, those guys. Uh, but it's interesting because it, it, it makes you wonder what motivates these people, what gets them into it. Because I think most people into Bigfoot are normal people. They're they're just probably curious. They they kind of yeah. have a little bit of rebellious spirit. They don't exactly, well, you know, just because you say it does it's not real, it's like you almost want to go out of your way to prove it. I think most people are just, they, they, it's fun. You know, it's a good time. It makes, it's like camping. It makes it a little bit more spooky and mysterious. And there's nothing wrong with that at all, especially with how crazy the world is. It's a good little escape. Um, but uh, yeah, then people try to prey on that and take advantage of that. And that's what happens. I mean, that's going to happen with anything humans do. I mean, look at religion or uh, politics. You know, I, I don't, I don't need to even like, say anything for people to immediately get like a guttural kind of, or like a, a gut instinct knowing that, Oh yeah, it's all politics is crap or whatever, you know? So it's, yeah. It comes with the territory. And Bigfoot has politics, as does every oh, yeah. topic. And <laughs> you know, I, I, I've at yeah. times gotten so frustrated with the Bigfoot topic that I'll I'll go do other cryptids and I'll do other topics, and it's like just as toxic. And I'm like, oh my god, Do you think because there's less people, like in the Lake Champlain, you know, uh, monster research circles, there's just just as much drama. And I'm like, dude, this is crazy. At least with Bigfoot, there's way more people looking into it, so you can you can weed out uh, the ones you don't want to don't want to associate yeah. with so i don't know it's it's very interesting and if if you weren't looking at it for the bigfoot part of it you could totally just analyze the people part of it it's like people watching almost yeah it is and i mean uh, like i agree with everything you just said dude like uh it can be so political here you know um uh, but you just do what you do right like yeah like I'm i like, do like i just I do what care. i do yeah. Fuck the politics, you know. Oh, for sure, I, I know my people that I trust and people that I like to hang out with. And I was, I always like to remind myself of this when, uh, you know, and I used to get into Facebook arguments way back in the day, but other stuff too in life. And you know, I, I think I, yeah. not to say I'm, I'm, I'm mature or anything, but uh, I, I just matured a little bit out of that stuff and not really caring as much. And I, I always find one of, my, one of my funnest things to do now, or the funniest thing that we like to do is whenever one of our new videos comes out, we like to read the most negative, crazy comments. Cause it's almost like fuel. Cause it's so <laughs> funny. Like we've gotten some hilarious ones, you know, barely literate, but the person is insulting us based on our appearance or whatever. And it's just kind of funny. Like you have to find a way to deal with the crap, but um, yeah, yeah, people yeah. can be crazy, but uh, you know, just, I think you got to balance it and take it, you know, step back if it's getting too crazy with the folks. And I always tell myself, I was going to, if I forgot about this point, I was going to say, I was telling myself I can just get out of this tomorrow if I wanted to. I can just stop interacting with the Bigfoot community and go do something else. Like there's plenty of other things I'm interested in. Something you can kind of you can do it. You don't have, you're not shackled to it. I mean, unless it's like absolutely, uh, you know, you're one of these people that needs to get to the bottom of it. You know, there's something we'll probably uh, most of us won't have a answer to by the end of our lives. I, no, I disagree with that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and that, you know, I mean, we could circle around to that if you want to. It's like I I have my own, like, ideas about how to actually observe them. Sure. And I think it's doable. Like, it's 2021, man, you know. And to be honest with you, people have been using the same tactics and the same techniques. The boots on the ground shit. Yep. Uh, even with technology that's available, but I consider that crappy technology. Um, so, 
if they spend fifteen hundred dollars on a Fleer monocular, that's crap. Like to me, that's crap. Like that ain't good enough. It's, it'll never like it'll never have the the uh, definition. You know, yeah, it's, it's cool. Like if, it, you know, I use some of the floor stuff too. And if I saw a Bigfoot on a floor, like that'd be a really cool experience. But I don't think as this would happen with other floor videos out there. Yeah. It might, is it that might gonna be prove good. something. Not really. It might be good for situational awareness in yeah. real time, but and not it is. For filming. And I, I found, you know, most of the time I've, I've had like with this, like this recent trip in Ohio where I, I realized I was surrounded by coyotes. Not that I'm scared of the coyotes. It just was cool. Because if I didn't have that flur, I wouldn't have known until I turned my flashlight on and saw their eye shine that they were all looking at me like, what is this guy doing up in the tree at night? And the yeah. flur, I was able to see them start moving their little heads around and it was cool. But, yeah. but again, you know, you get a good flur video of a big flur or even, you know, most of them are blob squatch kind of stuff. And I think some of the ones that have been That's put out there, exactly. they're, good, they're, they're good videos. I mean, they probably do show a Sasquatch, but the, what, have they propelled the subject? And, and that's not to knock those guys at all. And uh, and say that they're, you know, their their efforts are not valiant because we're doing kind of the same thing. I mean, if we were to get a floor video, I'd, I'd love to share it with people. But, you know, I don't think it's going to really move the needle all that much, unfortunately. It just depends on what ca kind of camera you got, Alex. Uh, there's better than Fleer monocular. Oh, absolutely. So you can advance further. Okay, so you're talking about $1,500 camera, like a Fleer monocular. Well, if you get a uh, seven thousand, ten thousand dollar, you know, Fleer or Bozen, the quality goes up exponentially. Totally. Yeah, and put it in the air. <laughs> drones. I, I've put been it in the air on a on a on a yeah. drone with Fleer stuff for a while. Yeah, that's my <laughs> thing. That's I see the comment from Central Florida Bigfoot Matt says, and here it comes, drone. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. exactly what it is. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. Thanks, Matt. He was he saw it coming. He's like. Oh, me, totally. Matt, me and Matt have had this discussion. I've hashed it out with him. Matt's awesome. You know? yeah. he, he's, um, he's, he's great on the hounding people about the camera stuff. Don't bring potatoes to the woods, you know? Yeah, and, and dude, I totally agree with him on that. Um, uh, every Bigfoot researcher out there, every single one of you, go buy a gimbal. Whatever you're, whatever you're filming with, you know, a real camera or yep. a, a cell phone, even a cell phone, you could put a gimbal yeah, those phone. are great. Those are awesome. They're not that expensive anymore either. Yeah. Just you can go get buy a, a gimbal, dude. Yeah. yeah. Like you have you have so much more control. You don't understand what a gimbal is. Like oh, for sure. Uh, I could I could sh I would take a minute to show everybody. But uh it's like if you do this, the the camera just d stays right there. Like yeah, that's I mean, how do you, you think, do this? This how do you think this, people this, get that super safe, smooth yeah. drone footage? You know, when they're getting up in the air and we're getting wind coming at us, yet we're still able to get still uh, or yeah. very you know slow, nice moving footage is because that gimbal in there has that technology that mitigates natural conditions that it takes it all it. out. And it's, yeah. Use the technology. That's a good technology. You know, I don't think there's anything nefarious about gimbals. I think they just give people the ability to create much better video, whether or not you're doing it for entertainment if you're just trying to get nature shots or for when it comes to useful stuff like this i think it's definitely a good tool yeah even even if you're just trying to tell the 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 people story yep right you know so if you're just filming yourself out in the woods it's like hey i'm looking for bigfoot today uh have that gimbal man like go. dude you'll get a great shot it's good for your content you're whatever that content your production is you're quality. trying to do yeah Production value right there. There it's you go. Production value. <laughs> it goes way, way up. It's better than, you know, uh, like, uh, right. Uh, 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 you know, potato cams. Yeah. We don't yeah. want that. Potato, no potato cams, cams. Exactly. <laughs> but yeah, as far as the drone thing goes, man, like, that's my thing. Like, see, sure. this is, that's my aeronautical chart back here. There you go. Like, yeah, with all the fucking airports and the airspace issues, and like, I'm a professional drone pilot. So awesome. Yeah, I, I got to get my uh, my license here soon at some point. But yeah, I got all the apps. I got before you fly. Um, what is mm -hmm. the other one? I, I think it it didn't download now, but I have you know a couple of these apps, the FAA stuff, just so you can see the area. I think even right. if you're not just trying to get video like that, the drones give you such. And I've said this for years. I love being able to go to an area I haven't been before. I'm like, let me throw the drone up. 
just to get a feel for the terrain. I mean, this is something that 10, 15 years ago, you would not have been able to have the ability to do. No, so you would, so, you would so have cool. to literally hire a fucking uh, helicopter crew to fucking yep. go do that. You could do it all right there from your right there. Yeah, it's amazing. Even if you have like a little one of the tinier ones or one of the Mavics, Phantoms, whatever. Mavic, whatever you're Phantoms, them, yep. They're just great for that. Like obviously mm -hmm. getting good shots, but just being able to survey an area. And I've been able to go through areas and say, oh, there's a swamp here. I want to go there because I might be able to find tracks of something in there, whether it be moose or something. And that's helped tremendously in just that boots in the ground research. So use some of the technology. I mean, if you can afford it, if you can put some money to the side, uh, check Facebook marketplace. People sell that kind of stuff all the time for yep. a lot cheaper. I've sold stuff on there like that. Um, and it's, it's a great place and you can get a halfway decent drone or a used gimbal or something. Check the used section on even Amazon and, and, um, eBay as well. I've gotten, I get those zoom audio recorders for like 20, $30 off because they've just been opened once, you know, on Amazon yes. the used section it might take longer to ship because people are so used to getting it shipped next day or within the week, you know, it might take a while longer to ship, but Hey, at least you're getting something for cheaper if you're really on a tight budget. So just try to make it work. Um, in, in any way that you can, if you're really truly dedicated about getting out there and doing the research. Yep. Take, take a gimbal. Again, if you're a Bigfoot researcher, you should have every, uh, everything gimbaled. And some people think that it's like, Oh, it's too clumsy. And some of it is due to me. If you have a, you know, uh, like a real camera, you know, like a, like any kind of like Sony or whatever, dude, like, a real camera like does get a little clunky you yeah know? but oh i know trust if me you're, we're, if you're, we're you're, out there with uh big lenses and everything and yeah 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 you use real cameras it's but, tough but, but it's fun it's great i mean i've gotten used to it you know it's like but, whatever but for your uh for your iphone it's nothing it's yeah. like it's like it's like it's like this it's like holding this in your hand like one of the ones you we know? uh one of the most common ones we use out in the woods is uh, like this Sony Handycam. And these are great because the moment you power it on, well, the battery's dead, but it flips right open. Uh, these yep. guys shoot in 4K. And these are great for point and shoot. So we'll always have one of these on a tripod or strapped onto somebody. So if, if we have anything happen, you can just turn it on right away. You can flip it. You can open up this little section here so yep. that you can Love actually it. look through it without getting any um, interference. And I, I run with a Sony Love mirrorless set up on, on a larger camera, but we also have these IR torches you throw up on the top. So if you need to go IR and blast a little bit in the IR, yeah. if you're up in there at night, it just works. But, uh, you know, other camcorders work great too, but ultimately um, just stabilization built in or gimbal is probably the best because most people have iPhones. So that's the, uh, the, the gimbal is definitely good on, in, in on iPhones, especially. I know a lot of people who run that, run it that way. Yeah. It's e it's so easy. It's just like, and the control you have, like once you master that control, it's like, oh wow, oh, yeah, it's pretty like, intuitive. You mean I could do this? I could do that? Like you know, like yeah, you can, for sure. Um, uh, yeah. So like again, man, production stuff, <laughs> but that's good. Like that fits into the whole category of what researchers can do I, better, yeah, you know? I think so, so I see uh, one from Matt in there. He says, Alex yeah. drone versus kayak. Any thoughts? Yeah. Which is interesting. Okay. I'd say, I'd say both, honestly, time and place, right? Drones you can use in, in most scenarios. Kayak. I think in a place like where Matt's at down in Florida, we get a lot more water. Great right. to use a kayak. You can move in silently. I know of researchers who have done that up in, Whitehall, New York, you know, they'll kayak into these spots and get in really quietly. And you can go to places where you wouldn't be able to go to driving wise. If you got a lot of water to work with, great. But uh, I, I've tried both. I mean, we did in Maine, we did, I went out in the middle of the lake at night. In middle, we're in the middle of nowhere, like three hours from the nearest paved road. And I sat in a kayak in my boat or in my kayak blasting baby crying sounds, you know, and that's in the main episode. You'll see it. And the idea was, Hey, let's play some baby crying sounds that usually might, maybe they'll bring some predators in or something that's curious that might be like, Hey, what, what's going on in this lake. And then I sat there with the fleur and kind of looked around. We didn't really have anything happen, but uh, yeah, I think kayaks definitely, definitely are great. Depends on the conditions and you know, what's going on. So time and yeah. place for sure. I'd say, you know, uh, uh, especially where Matt is, 
Yeah, totally. Yeah. So like, yeah, that that's important. Like navigating those waterways in a different way where you can't cross, like you can't just march through that, that area is that it, Matt makes the point is like, well, really the only hell we can't get over there to this area. And unless we take a, a boat or something, right. Right. So, uh, it's not like that where I'm at. Like in North Georgia, kayak is useless. Yeah, right. A drone is everything. In kayak Rocky, is useless. Yeah, in the Rocky mm -hmm. Mountains where we were at, a uh, kayak is probably the worst tool you could have in that environment because there's exactly. very few, there's very little water except for creeks. Yeah, and, yeah, and creeks that will dive down like that. Oh, yeah. every, uh straight like, out of a mountain. You yeah, know, every quarter of mile. Yeah, like yeah. So it's uh. For where you're at, Matt, what you're doing is is awesome. And, Perfect, yeah. and you know me, I applaud it, I support it. Dude, come on, man, Matt. We're friends. I mean, my drone's gonna capture them on film before your kayak thing does. <laughs> we know we all knew that. But yeah, I mean, um, but so yeah, dude, we, we kind of have a friendly competition going oh, on. Oh no, nothing yeah. wrong with that. Yeah, because I just think dude, thermal drone. Uh, in areas of the country where the canopy is dropped. So it's not for like all parts of the country, yeah. but it's certainly useful in parts of the country where they're at. Sure. I think it's yeah, like, maybe. I mean, dude, you're just gonna, if you ever found one, you could camp on top of it and film it for as long as your batteries last. Totally. Totally. And yeah. uh, Goodbye, Patterson Gimlin film. Nobody's exactly. ever ever going to talk about that ever again. I probably we're just yeah. we're just hoping to dethrone the P the PGF film and you know well, the PG yeah. film. We all love it. Obviously, it's cool. You know, I, I got to sleep at the film site where it happened, where Patty walked. I mean, it's awesome. But but uh, you know, it's w w our goal is to hopefully get something better. And I think you know, in a place like the Pacific Northwest, the thermal drones might not be as good because you have these it won't be yeah. 200 foot tall redwoods be. or 150 yeah. foot tall douglas fir trees that are just it is so hard to just get to that canopy but you go to some yeah. lower shrubbier areas hey man that's that's where you're talking dude it, it, it i i said this um uh, not too long ago and i've said it more than once it's like if you come to north georgia like in the summertime it's vietnam yeah in the winter time it's hiroshima yeah, it's that big of a di like it poof, it's gone, bro. Yep. It's all gone. You can see, like, you could see, like, just driving down the road from 10 miles away, you could see through the mountain, you can see yeah. the ground on, like, not the canopy anymore, not the fuzzy, cool shit that's beautiful. But, like, if there's snow up there, you see it, it's it's white, like, it's. It's a dramatic change. And so you guys don't, you guys don't get it, nearly as much snow as we do. So I think that's something in the south. And we're hoping to get down to Georgia at some point, do beyond the trail of stuff. And I want to do it hopefully in the winter too. Um, oh, I'll show you where to go. Like, yeah. I, I, I got you dialed in, man. I know exactly where Sweet. you need to be. Yeah. Totally, because we're we you know we want to do some Florida stuff because I think the only time Florida and you know no offense to Matt in the comments, the only time Florida isn't kind of hell is uh, at least for me as a northerner. Uh, you know, in January. I, yeah, it's a January, February, <laughs> March. It's like aside yeah. from that, I hate humidity. I hate dealing with extreme humidity well, I hate like Florida, that. So yeah. So I mean, it's like yeah, a beautiful place, but for a certain time for me at least. But uh, that gives that gives you a chance to you know do some Florida stuff. Maybe we'll hop up to to Georgia and some other areas because uh, up here the problem is we get so much snow and the conditions are so crazy yeah. that yeah. The, the forests are still pretty thick. I mean, there's a lot of pine, a lot of rhododendrons where animals hide. And even then, you know, it's hard to find moose, which moose don't hibernate. So they're running around, you know, not to bring it to moose again, but down there in uh, North Georgia, it seems you guys don't have as harsh of conditions. So it's like, no, dude, win you, winter you seems like a camping. great time. Yeah, you, you can go camping here in North Georgia in the middle of January, like awesome. January 15th. Uh, it, you know, I, I don't know. It might be maybe the like, I'll, bad cold snap comes through it might be at worst 20 degrees outside yeah which is honestly you know my, one of the nothing. beyond the trail episodes nothing we filmed the night investigation it was five degrees it was the coldest single night of the entire this past winter and that was when my buddy and i were going out to do this night investigation sequence and i'm like dude let's just do it that'll be part of the fun is you know half yeah. of the, half of the thrill is trying to stay alive out there and people right. in the comments make fun of it and they're like 
oh, you guys took all that stuff camping for one night. I'm like, well, it just happened to be the coldest night. So, yeah, I was bringing every little last piece of tech and, uh, you know, thing to keep me warm for a good reason. And I think that was kind of part of the fun, uh, just putting yourself through some challenges like that. And you, it really makes you appreciate when you're able to go back to a nice warm bed yeah. and heating yeah. and, you know, wood stove, whatever you might have in your house. It's it's like it makes you realize how lucky we are to to live in these uh these these houses and civilization really no kidding but yeah like i mean it's 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 a um, it's open it's like it's wide open here bro yeah. like i mean you could do you know 12 months like whatever, whatever month in the summer though it's like it kind of sucks it's, it's like just humid it's and so I bet it's like, thick. yeah yeah because like even here in north georgia dude it's hot as fuck it gets hot sweaty yep. there's snakes there's fucking bugs you know sure, but in the, the winter time all so fun all that in the winter time all that stuff yep. goes away which is why i camp like just recreationally you know i i camp you know o september october through march maybe right maybe april you know I'm like, oh, for sure, yeah. bring it on. Like, there's sounds no perfect bugs. to me. I don't like dealing with bugs and uh, humidity and all that stuff. So yeah. that sounds good to me. Well, yeah, man. Let me let me know, man. When you're oh, for sure. Like, we're coming we're, to we're, North Georgia. I will. Uh... We're thinking about it for sure. I actually have a friend who's in that area. Who, okay. I don't know where. I mean, it's. I know it's obviously a big area, but he's had some kind of strange stuff on a rural property he lives that he thought was like ghost activity that was like knocking and that kind of stuff. So. You know, it's that kind of, it's like he's, you know, it's funny people don't think of it. They just assume it's some other thing going on until you tell them, well, this is what's reported with, uh, you know, yeah. big behavior. And they're like, oh, that's exactly what was happening. And it's like, we just thought it was this, you know, this other thing or something. We thought it was the ghost that was reported in the area. Like, it's funny. Yeah, right. But yeah, definitely. That would be awesome. I'll, I'll have to let you know. Yeah, this man, winter. I'll, um, I mean, I'll, I'll definitely point you in the right direction. I mean, it, it's hit and miss, dude. Like just yeah. like anything, sure. You know, but well, yeah, that's the thing is, you know, I go in the woods and I don't expect to experience anything Bigfoot related or Bigfoot every time, as a lot of people I think do, and you know, nothing wrong with that. But uh, you got to be able to discern what are other sounds. I mean, I've had times where people are like, "Oh, did you hear that? It's clearly a woodpecker or a barred owl," and it's like, "No, that was something else." It's like, no, right. you should spend some time at least be familiar with some of the stuff in your area. Just so if you do have something really weird that happens, you can at least say, well, it wasn't this. I mean, uh, yeah. I think it's just an yeah, important part. If you're going to do research, just go and listen to some animal sounds for like an hour. Weird because they make some weird sounds. They can do some weird stuff, too. And barred owls, which are the most common owl pretty much in North America. Yep. Mm -hmm. Very aggressive. They they, they make weird aggressive sounds, man. Animals. But they make some. Yeah, they're like the monkey hooting kind of stuff. Yeah, they, they make monkey sounds. Yep. And shit. Yeah. Like it's like, yeah. Uh, like that barred owls are as far as audio goes matt uh, i mean uh Probably Alex, yeah. is that um I, wow i just like that was a 40 and slip that just came out of my mouth as far as audio goes alex uh yeah barred owls are the most you know misinterpreted like semi-audio of a fucking bigfoot that's yeah. a barred owl yeah, it's yeah. it's barred owls and coyotes, probably two of the most they, yes. confused things yeah. for. And, and I think it's just, um, you know, people obviously they have wishful thinking and that kind of stuff. And just just like I said, try to be familiar. If you have an area in particular that you're going to that's in your local area, just just learn a little bit about the, about the ecology. You know, talk to some uh, forest service people, talk to some uh, local, you know, whatever your state environmental agency, if you have like we have fish and game here you know maine has wardens uh i know in places they have environmental police like just ask them talk to some of those people talk to the biologists they're more than happy to talk to people and educate because very rarely do people go up to them and ask like well you know can you tell me a little bit more about uh fishers or a raccoon behavior like just learn random stuff about different animals because that'll help you ultimately be able to say well it wasn't a bigfoot that came to my camp and took that maybe it was just a raccoon i don't know i mean Unless you saw it happening, then it's like, well, okay, yeah, yeah. A raccoon and the Bigfoot are kind of hard to mistake. <laughs> they can't. Uh, uh, that's the, the thing with the peanut butter is that um, I'm pretty sure it's been well documented that raccoons can actually open peanut yeah, they, butter jars. I guess, like they're clever. They're, they, you know, they 
their little hands are kind of agile, you know, enough to to get into that yum yum at least. Oh yeah, their their, their senses are pretty great, but um, you know, if you're if you're doing those kinds of experiments, have a way to you know make sure that it's not some other critter. A lot of the times. Most of the people worry about bears and stuff getting in their camps too. And it turns out it's actually rodents and little small critters that they can get in and gnaw their way through and, and steal food. So that's something to be aware of as well when you're out there. And like you said, raccoons and kind of smaller critters being able to do some of that stuff. Yeah, I agree. Music to my ears, bro. Like this whole conversation has been, uh, so, uh, so where, where can people find you? Like, so I came across your show. I don't even know how I came across your show. And I'm like, man, this guy, he, you were, uh, it was your last show, like with, uh, yeah. with somebody in New Hampshire. Yeah. A researcher yeah. up here. Yeah. He, he's yeah. a cool guy. I'm probably gonna head out with him. He's, uh, you know, kind of wants to publicly stay anonymous, but, uh, I, I talked to him a lot even before and after, and he's pretty solid. I just, it, I thought it, it was a good show. It was refreshing. I was like, Oh my God, this guy's one of us. I say one of us, like our little coalition of like, like we're kind of critical thinking, reasonable, sure. you know, kind of like that's what we do here. Well, I because th I think the subject gets so sensationalized often, and you know yep. the the scariest stories are the ones that get put up. I think a lot of the Bigfoot encounters, you know, they might be scary to the people happening, but I hear this more often than in anything else. Is if this thing wanted to kill me, it could, but it didn't. Yeah. And which leads you me to believe, you know, I, I'm not I'm not naive to go in the woods without protection or anything uh, because I know there's other threats out there. But uh, right. I, I don't think these things are killers or the sadistic murderers that they are po portrayed in certain programs. And I mean, that's just people like to be scared. Right. We love horror movies. We love creepy yeah. things that go bang in the night. That's nothing wrong with that. Um, but uh, that's the stuff that sells. And I think we're trying to take a little bit of the sensationalism out of it and and just look at it, you know, what is actually going on here? There, there's something going on. I mean, I don't think this is some mass hysteria that's mm -hmm. widespread and, uh, you know, people are just all insane. I mean, there's a lot of definitely people, not, man. But, <laughs> but like you, you've had stuff happen. You know what I'm talking about. Um, and some of it is just so intangible. You really can't like, there's no way for me to, you know, prove that I experienced a Bigfoot, which with the encounters I've had, but you know, when stuff is throwing rocks at you or whatever, it's just, it's hard to, it's so, it, it leaves us as researchers trying to kind of get to that point where we can be like, well, okay, this is, this is what's going on. If we can get some definitive proof or something else that uh, even mm -hmm. if it's just proof to ourselves, you know, if you just, if you see one, right. Yeah. Um, a lot of researchers go their whole lives without ever having a visual or, or any kind of encounter like that. So uh, it's just part of the search, I guess. It's not, it's not the same for everybody. And it's certainly uh you know, an interesting topic and, and I don't, I don't want to, you know, get burned out of it or anything. That's why I kind of do my own thing. And like I said, if, if it gets too crazy or hot and heavy, just get out, you know, for people's mental, <laughs> mental health, yeah, don't yeah. get caught up in the drama. <laughs> it's not worth it. It's really never, it's never worth it. Like don't even yeah. argue with your friends on Facebook. It's just stupid. I agree. Um, but yeah, when I when I came across your show, which uh, which is okay, so that channel is the uh, Sasquatch Out of the Shadows. Yeah, so that's just my kind of personal yeah. channel. I started really when I got into this stuff back in 2016. I, I did a documentary about the Loch Ness monster, and then I started interviewing people in my local area about Bigfoot. And then I kind of was going around every place I'd I'd go to in the U.S. If I was visiting friends or whatever, I'd kind of look into the Bigfoot stuff. And I just sort of uh, the, the live show started during COVID because, you know, everyone was locked in and I was just right. kind of like, hey, I've been wanting to do this for a while. I didn't want to do a podcast. There's so many of those out there. And I'm like, I'm just going to do a YouTube live stream. I know there's a couple other people that do it. I i had been aware of a few other programs with live stream kind of things going on. I was like, seems like fun. I'll take audience questions, have right. guests on and let the audience. Uh, and, and it's been a lot of fun because we've had. A ton of cool audience questions like people ask really educated questions and they'll like do research on the guest and ask them about you know what why is it that you uh have you know worked on this topic whatever blah 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 right. so it's just a lot of fun I, I have fun doing it it's a it's a good way for me to break up my monday and um you know i have i'm bringing up the show back uh next week we'll be doing a recap of the recent on the trail of filming and then we're going to start having the regular kind of guests on and like i said that's just my personal channel where i'll put 
other kinds of videos too and Bigfoot related stuff and if not other cryptid related stuff. Yeah, no, I mean, I just, you know, I thought it was great. Like, I, I, I don't even know how I came across your channel, bro. Like, honestly, I can't remember if somebody posted it somewhere. The, al the algorithms probably. Or are. maybe the algorithm, <laughs> like, shoved it in my face. Yeah, that happens. I have uh, that like, happen. You you were actually live. Oh, sick. Like, yeah, you were, you're like, so the, you were, you were live. I was like, oh, check this out. You know, I was like, fuck, oh, this is a great discussion. And uh, I was like, I think I knew who, is that, like, I this guy's familiar to me. Uh, fuck, I think that's a small town monsters guy. <laughs> Wait, hold on. Hold on. Right, right, right. Like, yeah, it is cool. Like, that's that's kind of how it happened. I was like, oh, that's cool. Even better, man. Like, so good, good for you for having the show, man. And so you you you're you know, you're pumping out content, man, from you know, left, right, and center, everywhere. And uh I love it good shit yeah i mean that's so yeah that's probably the easiest way to well the easiest way to find out is petakov media that's my website p-e-t-a-k-o-v media.com and the reason i say that's the easiest place is that's the, i just post links to everything on there so if you want to watch the latest beyond the trail of and we're really trying you know to put at least one episode a month out so we've got we've got some crazy locations we filmed between january and september so right now early september we filmed eight feature length episodes and six of which were filmed between june and september so uh as i mentioned the B bigfoot at bluff creek just came out but bigfoot in oregon is coming out uh this month next month is going to be colorado rocky mountain sasquatch followed by the olympic project sasquatch so we spent some time out there last spring with the olympic project and which is probably one of my favorite bigfoot research groups out there they're like i don't think there's anyone better than what they're doing uh, they're just yeah. crazy. And some of the stuff they have is awesome. They're just awesome people too. But then we have uh, Utah Bigfoot and uh, Minerva Monster revisit. So that's kind of Ohio. So, and then we've also announced some of the stuff we're trying to do for 2022. Today, actually, they announced it. We're trying to do some Florida stuff, as I was talking about Georgia, mm -hmm. uh, more New England stuff, probably Oklahoma, Alaska, maybe the Sierras. Well, the Sierras and Ape Canyon. So we're really trying to get to like the most well-known Bigfoot spots pretty much out there and, and see what we can or can't have happen, can or can't have happen. Cool. Fair enough. So that's, that's most of what, what I'm working on now. And then, like I said, my, my channel is just kind of, I, I'll have people on that I really want to talk to and we just have conversations. Most of the people I've had on have been friends, but you know, occasionally I'll invite on people that uh, I'm just curious and hearing about and you know, what they've got going on if they have some interesting research or stuff they want to share. Cool, man. <clears throat> so, uh, yeah, I'll have yeah. to have you on there at some point for sure. Uh, yeah. All I know is that you have the, uh, you have the, uh, I am, I am BD credentials to, uh, back up your work. <laughs> and yeah, I don't, I don't, I'm not there, but you do like everybody check, check out the credentials, man. They like, you know, Alex's, Legit, obviously. Every you guys have all seen the stuff, one way or another. Um, life, so life is a flyway. Says, "Hey, I know the Minerva monster that's just down the road. Very cool. Yeah, we were just out there this past week. Um, Eastern Ohio, man. I think more so now than even before. I mean, I, I was aware of all the Bigfoot stuff out there, but it was like the first state in the East Coast that really broke that." Pacific Northwest is where Bigfoot's at mold. I mean, you've had right. consistent activity, consistent reports from the seventies on, and you can see why. I mean, the area we spent in was absolutely beautiful. It's the foothills of the Appalachians. So yeah. right as you get into Pennsylvania, West Virginia, I mean, it makes sense that these things would be passing through here. It seems to be seasonally like every year they seem to get a certain time of year and then other points it'll just die down. So mm. uh, awesome. Great, great part of, uh, Ohio that you're in if, if Minerva is just down the road from you it's a it's a beautiful place cool yeah that's awesome so before I let you go man I, we're gonna kind of wrap it up I guess um so like <laughs> like I was gonna like um I was gonna talk to Doug about this like so Doug Doug was on Friday for the second time. Oh, cool. Yeah, and I was I was gonna like talk to him about this, but I never got a chance to because 
in in uh patrick started to talk about thermal plastics oh yeah and i'm like okay, i felt like that big i'm like uh i don't know anything about that uh but i wanted to mention this doug so i'll just throw it out there to you dude sure so just like what you would think um all right let's say we could get greg nicotero to oh, try shit. and reproduce the Patterson Gimlin film using modern, like using modern shit, not CGI, yeah. obviously, sure, sure. like no CGI. So just like boots on the ground, special effects, Greg Nicotero. Yeah. Who I couldn't think of anybody better. I like, like come that. on, Greg. Come so, on, dude. You show I'm me Patty. I'm conflicted. <laughs> if I should, if I should put this out there publicly, um, because I, I don't want people to steal my idea, but uh, this is something I've actually talked to with some friends of mine, uh, Bigfoot people as well. And I think it was actually in Bluff Creek we were talking about this because, you know, you're, you have Patty on the brain. You're thinking of about course, you're in this yeah. site where this happened. I'm like, you know, why did these guys choose to come all the way out here? They could have filmed in a, the backside of uh, Willow Creek. It Wherever the they same. wanted. Yeah. yeah. Their uh, backyards, I, basically. How cool would it be to have a, a program where you have two teams, right? One is, let's say, Greg Nicotero or somebody that works with Weta or Stan Winston's uh, workshops, something like that. Yeah. They, they have to recreate Patty um, with all the modern technology as, as much of a budget as they want. So that's team one, right? Team two is skilled or, or people that would have had the same skill sets as uh, uh, Bob Gimlin and Roger Patterson. And, and they can only use technology that would have been available in time. 1967 right. and maybe like just yes. taxidermy kind of stuff and then see who comes up with a better Bigfoot or who's able to match Patty closer. I just think that would be a cool concept for like a show. You know, you have the two competing teams. Oh, dude, it could be a docuseries. Yeah, absolutely. Fucking, yeah, on fucking on any of those platforms we talked about. Yeah. I mean, you see some of those prosthetics and stuff they do in like The Walking Dead and, and those, and you know, yeah. you mentioned Greg it would, take, and it would take funding though. Like, oh, for sure. It would. It would not be. Somebody cool. would have to fund it. You know, obviously. I mean, I, I'm sure you yeah. could probably get a network and like interested in something like that. That would be really cool. And the you know the Patterson Gimlin film obviously is so well known uh, throughout the world. So I think I think it could definitely attract some attention. So don't steal my idea, guys. That's that's I, my idea. <laughs> it's, it's my idea too. We hell, we both had the same idea. No, pretty for sure. Much. But if if somebody yeah. gets different it variations, yeah. If they manage to get into fruition, just just let me know because I would love to to find. Yeah, out me too. Uh, yeah, let um, us know for sure because that sounds awesome. I'm sure every Bigfoot person out there would well, be like that. I, cool. I I worked under Greg. I was I was one of his babies. So yeah. Oh yeah, you're in Georgia, right? I mean, I heard yeah. uh, I've had friends who worked on The Walking Dead, and they said it was The Working Dead. That's what they called it. Oh yeah, <laughs> man! It was uh, six sixteen hour days. Yeah. Like oh, crazy. Yeah. It's a great, I mean, I used to watch that show. Yeah. I haven't, honestly, I haven't watched it since, gosh, season nine, maybe. The oh, last, well, that's, I mean, that's recent. Yeah. Yeah. It was, I, I was yeah. watching it for a while and I kept falling in and out, falling in and out of uh, favor with it. I'm just like, come on, you guys just got to end it at this point. Well, I was, um, I was, uh, I was uh, season six, seven, and eight. Awesome. And I was, yeah, I worked under Greg and, uh, yeah, so it, I mean, it was amazing, and I can't I, again. I can't think of anybody better, dude. Like take, like take that to Greg, man, and go, dude. Let's do this. Yeah. Like, like recreate, like you know, like. But again, it, obviously, that would cost him time and money sure. and resources. Obviously, so it's like, well, you know, it's going to have to be funded one way or another. But that it was just, awesome it's way. just an idea that I would throw out, like out there to you, dude, as your producer and. And just kind of I bounce know. that off of you and say, "What do you think, man?" Like, that'd I know, be a good funny. idea, right? Like I said, you know, we both kind of had the, have had the same idea. So, yeah. hopefully, someday, I think that would be really cool because the further we get away from the the, the time when the Patterson Gimlin film happened, it's still that's what still amazes me is it's, and this is a point that was actually brought up, and it was in it was mm -hmm. in Bigfoot at Bluff Creek. Rowdy Kelly, one of the Bluff Creek project members, he said, you know, it's 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 still you know. 50 something years later, we're still debating whether this thing was real. I mean, that's pretty incredible if you think debunked. about it. Pretty amazing. Yeah. So uh, if we could be able to do that, that'd be awesome. And um, I don't know. I don't want to beat a dead horse because I think overall 
Patterson Gimlin film is kind of a moot point at this point. At this it's, point, it it's is. not going to prove one way or another. Even but it if would be are. entertaining as shit. To oh, see exactly, exactly. A modern it's, day person like Greg try and reproduce it, dude. No doubt, and I think that would uh, yeah. uh, definitely get a lot of eyeballs. They wouldn't have any trouble getting especially an audience with that. If, especially if he failed. If the end result was sort of a failure, okay. like that would speak loudly for the oh, BT for film. Sure. You know, you see, you see, like the 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 only attempts that have been done at the PGF film. I think there was a discovery program that tried it in like two thousand three or something. I remember watching it when I was younger. It was just pathetic. It was really bad. Yeah, I'm like, that's the money you blew the budget on. I'm like, no offense to those guys, but poof, man, that looks nothing even remotely close. Like the arms were human short. So I was like, oh come on. Yeah. Which, which which is why I said Greg. Like, yeah. like Greg Nicotero, like you can't argue with that level of skill. Imagine you, you get know? him, you give him some guys that work from Peter Jackson's Weta workshop, like the top of the top, mm -hmm. and see who can come up with something better than a bunch of cowboys or see what yeah. the cowboys can come up with. Because you never know. Maybe they're, they have some ingenious techniques about – you know, they spend their time with horses and they understand the muscle movements. You know, maybe they just really understand that stuff and they're able to create a convincing right. suit. I don't know. I mean, that's, that's, it, again, it would be just really in interesting to see how that would evolve. It, I do. It would, it would be fascinating, man. For sure. I'd love to be a part of it. Like I'm going to, I'm going to pitch that to whoever I can. You know, yeah, if you, if you run into Greg yeah. again, you know, I'll be like, "Hey, Greg, I got this idea." <laughs> well, it's yeah, I like I I can't get a hold of him on the phone. I'm sure but, he's a know. busy guy. Yeah, so it's like uh, kind of need somebody else to bridge that gap, honestly. Sure. Uh, but but yeah, it, you know, whatever way I could be a part of it, I would. So that would be awesome for sure. Um, like uh, just like uh, I told Doug about Legend Meet Science too, man. He's trying yeah. to like he's trying to put that together and you know launch it the way he wants to launch absolutely, it. absolutely yeah and he's he's obviously do he's you know uh, avoiding the networks because he wants control sure and that's know? that's the thing it's always going to come with conditions with those yeah guys so he them, wants so. he he wants that to launch like to his vision yep. he, he he says that very openly about what he wants it to be like eye-opening absolutely to, and, and, and to and, science yeah and that's something you know what that I guess we've been able to do with not only small town monsters, but other sort of crowd funded projects. You do have that creative control. You're able to show yep. what you want to show. You don't have to work within the parameters that you're stuck in. And that's been a blessing, honestly. Yeah. Um, you know, especially after having worked on, uh, you know, films and, and stuff that's been with series or kind of been a part of that sort of stuff. And it's, it's you realize that it's just, so much is agenda and it's just that you know somebody has control over a switch and if they don't yeah. like your idea they can nuke it two seconds and there's nothing yeah. you can do about it oh yeah or we might lose your job i mean so yeah. being able to have a creative control i think is is for me is really important and it's just it's, it's just great everything it's yeah. everything dude and that's why that's i love what you do alex like you have creative control you know like i love that you have that like I, I can't wait to get there myself, dude. Like right. the, the net network execs will come to you and go, yeah, but you know, we need to make it more big. Like, so put a guy in a suit out there yeah. and make it, make him Bigfoot with the red eyes. And like, they're talking shit. They don't know what the fuck they're talking oh, they, about. It's like, shut the fuck up. Yeah. You know we, we get to listen to people who are yeah. out there doing the research and who have stuff going on and stay true to their research and, what they what they think is going on. I mean, I don't have to. I don't have to make some eyewitness look crazy. Um, I can just tell their story, and and I don't have to cut it into a two minute segment. I can have them talk for ten minutes if I want. Yeah. If I can make it interesting enough that people will still watch it. Yeah. I, I, that's what I try to do because if there's important details that they need to tell that are part of the story, I want to keep that in there. I don't want to chop it up and you know you spend two hours interviewing someone like they do, and then they'll, it'll ends up in. 30 seconds. That's it. That's the encounter. It's like, did you really share your story then? Or did you just share the little sound bites that they wanted you to share that they cut up and put it out there? It's like here, at least I can yeah. kind of show what we're talking about. And I think it was something like legend meets science too. That that's, you want to be able to show the techniques and everything that's going on without the sensationalism. And yeah. Yeah. Plus like Doug's, Doug's trying to get like actual, like real DNA. Yeah. So he's going not, not bullshit. Like, but no, like absolutely. The expensive shit. Yeah, and that's yeah. and unfortunately that's that's really costly. I mean, I've 
spoken yeah. to him about That's it as well. Yeah. Certain, you know, hair samples and stuff that we've come across or been given that, uh, you know, like if you need to use any of that stuff, you know, go right, go right ahead. And um, it's being able to find someone. I mean, it's, it's lucky when you know connections, you have people that might be able to help you out with certain things. But other than that, it's tough because I know people outside of this that, uh, you know, they try to get hair samples tested and it's, it's, it's a pretty penny. It's not easy. Or just other samples, you know, like in my Mountain Lions documentary, the people that had their horse attack, they went out of their own pocket to ask uh, you to get a lab to test these samples because they just wanted to prove the state wrong that said that they were the reason why their horse got injured. Well, it turns out it was a male mountain lion and um, two reputable labs from universities both said it was the same result. So, but they paid a yeah. lot to get that done for sure. So, and you know, I never even got to, to that with you. Like, I wanted to talk about the freaking mountain lion thing with you tonight, and we never even got to that. So, We'll have to do a part two, maybe. We'll to, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm cool. I'm game, as you can see. I, I don't mind uh, chatting up. So, yeah, <laughs> uh, you know, it's fun because like you get to talk to people about these topics that you can get to talk to people about every day in your everyday lives. I mean, I'm sure you know people that you're close with that you probably wouldn't talk about this stuff with, just because it's not on their radar. They're not interested in it. It's fine. Oh, I don't care. Um, <laughs> you still, I'll, yeah. I'm like, hey, uh, Bigfoot's real. What is, <laughs> uh, you tell me otherwise. Right, right. What do you right. know about it? You know, sure. like I don't. I'm so confident, dude. When I when I talk about Bigfoot, it's not even funny. Oh, I know, but it's like, like, would you yeah. be able to have a two hour conversation with them? Probably not. It's like, oh, well, yeah, I could. No, I'm. Uh, I'm putting together a show where I have my. I'm gonna have my my personal friends come on. Oh, nice. And what and what what do they think about me yeah. and the Bigfoot thing? Like, it's gonna be entertaining as fuck, dude. Like, it'll be right. all no, over that's the board. Cool. You know, yeah. people have such a misconception. I don't know. I think a lot of people, not necessarily misconception, but they're just like, oh, what are you doing out there in the woods? And then I'm like, I, I'm finally able to show them. I'm like, well, this is kind of what we're doing. I'm like, oh, that's actually kind of cool. I'm like, yeah, you, you, what did you think? We're just crazy. Like, you know, we're going out there. It's like camping with a purpose, I suppose. That's one way to put it. Right. <laughs> Only Leon would take count. Like, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, dude. Dude, only Leon, like I was going to put it in chat. I'm just going to address it live on air. Only you would keep count. Like, dude, I'm I'm interested yeah. in I'm interested in what Alex is saying. Like, Le yeah, Leon's cool. Yeah, I mean, I'm like, I'm like, I'm, I'm sucked into a good conversation, man. So, yeah, I know. I said, dude, and all that 23 times. Only you would keep count. Only you would keep going. I used to struggle with that too, where I'd be like saying like, you know, people say like, or just say, or, uh, what or is um, it? you know, yeah. you know yeah. what I'm saying? You know, you know what I'm yeah. Saying? yeah. So I, I try yeah. to cut down on it a little bit and, uh, and, and focus on that. Just personally, I was just kind of getting annoyed with myself. So, um, but no, Leon's cool. He, he does some good stuff on uh, his channel and I've had him on my show as well. Definitely an interesting guy. A very, very good perspective, really? I think. When Leon's been it. okay. So Leon and Matt have already been on your show. How, how do I not know this? This is crazy <laughs> to me. I'm it was a long time you. ago too. I mean, I, I it was a while ago. I had Leon on, but uh, but yeah, no. There's there's a lot of cool people. I think in this sort of uh, in this YouTube circle too. I see a lot of people on the shows that comment. Um, right. That I'll see in other videos as well. Like I'll see him on Justin Chernipesky's videos. I'm like, oh, that's the guy who always comments on my stuff. And um, there's there's a lot of good folks for sure. I don't even know who that guy is. Like I keep hearing his name over and over again. I'm like, I don't know. I don't even know who that guy is. I, I need to go check it. Yeah, Justin. Like I need to go check him out. Oh, he's cool. Like, I think I think you'd you'd probably uh, enjoy talking to him as well. He's uh, yeah. He's pretty level headed, and he, I mean, in a lot of ways, I talk to him a lot. I, I've been trying to team up with him forever. Because I think we have a kind of a similar uh, way we go about things. He really is his stuff is nature. I mean, he's out there showing you the beautiful landscapes up in Canada and all this stuff. It's it's awesome. Definitely check out uh, Mountain Beast Mysteries. He does a good job. Okay. His production values are awesome. And all right, cool. He's a good dude. He's a genuine dude for sure. Yeah, I will check that out because his name has come up a lot lately. Yeah, definitely. and I'm like, I, I don't know who this guy is, man. Like, sorry, I just don't. You know? No, there's a, there's a lot of people out there. It can be tough to keep up with everything. Yeah, it can, it can. But the you know again, I mean, Alex, just like you, man. The deeper you swim in these waters, you know, the more more people you meet, right? Oh, you know, for sure. Like, yeah. And then you kind of vet that out as you go, right? Like, eh, yeah, totally. Eh, 
and or you're you're cool <laughs> there's a lot yeah there's a lot of strange ones out there but there's also some of the best people i've met have been through this and uh, people that i would frankly trust with my life you know just out in the woods you know you, people that uh, you know you got your back they got your back if uh shit were to hit the fan so to speak nice i like that wait wait till you meet patrick vaughn you haven't met him yet but you will <laughs> wait till cool. you meet that guy yeah no he's no, he's cool as shit like you're, you're gonna be like tell me more what huh? <laughs> awesome. like huh what keep keep talking patrick like yeah everybody that meets right patrick vaughn fucking gets sucked into like what he's got going on but Sweet. that's for another show sure sure um and thanks guys for showing up tonight i appreciate it uh hell man we got alex here he's, he's doing cool stuff it's good this is good shit like i i came across alex's show and i was like this is like reasonable like wait hold it reasonable talk about bigfoot like another one oh, i found something that stick around for the uh the, the woo part we went into you know we all we then yeah. all profess our, our loyalty to woo alien bigfoot oh, i'm kidding <laughs> well i mean if alex if you don't know it's all about the flying spaghetti spaghetti monster brother obviously i have proof chithulu i have proof the flying spaghetti <laughs> monster is real and it uh births bigfoots Oh, for um, sure. That that's where they come from. It makes sense. Well, I have proof. I I got proof. Um <laughs> so so yeah, man. Right hey, I, dude, I appreciate you much for being here. Uh, and I'm kind of on the fly, man. Like you just got back from your trip and you're like, "Hey, we could do this anytime. How about tonight?" All right. Yeah, cool. I mean, most yep. weeknights aside from Mondays when I do my show, I'm I don't have a whole lot going on. I'm editing a lot and doing a lot of other projects, but mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so happy to happy to come on. Cool, man. Uh, I'll send you some of my videos. Like I'm, sure. I'm a buddy. I'm a budding producer. Cool, cool. Like yeah. so, he, yeah. here's my thing right now. Like I, I talked to Doug, and uh, like I've, t I've talked to Wes a little bit. And uh, so now I'm talking to you. I'm like, hey, I'm the B-roll guy in the Bigfoot world. You need B-roll. I got, I got you for sure. You, you need B-roll. You, like, you want some cool like mountain shots, sure. like treetop. Oh, totally. Like, yeah, B-roll. I'm your guy. So that's who I am in the Bigfoot world now as a producer. Like, you guys are like, fuck me. <laughs> you got the, all the IDBM credits and shit. Like, okay. I'm I'm a budding producer in the Bigfoot world, dude. I will provide you with B-roll, just like I told uh, Doug. And uh, Awesome. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, we've got to make it work some way, right? Yeah, man. I mean, that's what I do. Like, ugh. I love, I love shooting film, man. I'm, I'm like you. Like, it's fun. It really. I is. love I mean, shooting that... film, man. I love producing. Um. Oh, totally. I mean, so, I, I like, think you know, you know, it's like for myself. If I wasn't doing the Bigfoot stuff, I'd still probably be doing some crazy adventure filmmaking or trying to go to North Korea again or somewhere else like that. So, dude, uh, what? <laughs> so that's that's a whole other story you've been in north korea once just once <laughs> did i see that did i see that footage i have a little thing on my website when I, I secretly filmed my cell phone when i was there this was a long time ago when i was crazy and and young i mean you know crazier back then when i was just out of school i was like i Dude, guess i had you're pretty crazy to go to North <laughs> Korea and try and capture footage. Holy shit, dude. That's it was a fun that's time. I, I didn't know that. I, yeah, it was I it no was clue. I mean, honestly, it was just like a I was traveling a little bit after school and I decided to go to North Korea and, and you know they let you film and everything there, but uh um, yeah, yeah they, when, when they're watching you, right? Yeah, but then you know, at one point I was just kind of like, Oh man, this is some good stuff. And we're driving around the countryside and you see all the poverty and you stick your camera out. A bunch of people took pictures, but you know the guards would come over and be like, "Can you delete that?" They, delete I it. saw them make yeah. the and I and I put my cell phone against the glass, and I was like, had my headphones in. I'm like pretending, and I'm looking around, and the chairs are high enough where you couldn't see the phone there, so I had the phone up against the glass, and that's the one I have on my website. And then I backed it up on a little uh, USB that looks I didn't like a know Lego. That. That's so this cool. is funny. So this USB actually. Looks like a little Lego block, right? Oh my like god, that. it looks just like a Lego, yeah. But then the USB pops out of it. Yeah. 
So I had these two with me and I mean, it's pretty easy once you look at it, but if it's going through a scanner, you're not going to be able to tell. Yeah. Um, so that's what I backed my footage up on. They didn't ask any weird questions though. They didn't, the North Koreans didn't wow. seem to be that concerned. I mean, they, we had heard horror stories all oh, that they'll look through your footage at the end before you leave, but they didn't, they didn't really care. I mean, for the most part, the tourists, they don't, they didn't, at that time, they didn't harass them as much because wow. we were just, Dude, that was, that's crazy, yeah. bro. Like we could do a whole show on that. I mean, at least half an hour. Right. I I'm mean, sure. That, I'm that, sure you have stories, man. Yeah. Oh, it was a bizarre experience. I wouldn't trade yeah. it and I probably wouldn't do it again. Um, but at the time I was yeah, like, you know yeah. what, I might as well do it. But you have some ethical issues. Like, you know, you're giving money to such a regime. Right. Um, but mm -hmm. you know, it's like, I don't know. I, I, I guess my background, you know, my, That's crazy, where dude. my family's from, I try to understand, you know, conflict and stuff that goes on in the world. And um, yeah, yeah. No, I get it. Dude. One part of it. Um, you know what? I, I, I'd love to talk more with you about shit like that. Like everything you just said, like, and we can do that here on Squatch Talk. Like, I think that's worthy of doing. I try and stay away from politics, but yeah. like North North Korea is not politics. Yeah, no, I it's wouldn't a, come on a, here to talk about like, yeah, you know, whatever COVID or some other stuff. Like, yeah, we hear about that day in day out. I think it's so annoying, and that's why I think like the Bigfoot and the paranormal stuff. A lot of people are gravitating towards it because they're sick of hearing people argue about this and that and. You know, people are never going to agree on these topics, but you know, if, if you can just talk about other cool topics, like why not? I mean, yeah, and that's a good one, dude. We will uh, we'll work that out, man. Like, oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah. let me know. I mean, I'm I'm happy to, you know, it's an experience I had. I'm happy to talk about it, and I'm really interested in that stuff because I I basically had spent a month in South Korea and then like five days in North Korea on a tour, like a government propaganda tour. So as like you see, the two contrasts, it couldn't be more crazy between South and North Korea. Oh, I know. And, you know I, I love South Korea, yeah. like amazing place. And I love the people. I mean, I, some of my good friends from high school were Korean. So I really got to like spend time with those people and uh, kind of experience their culture. And it's, it's freaking that's awesome. Cool, dude. They're awesome people. That That's cool. Like, did I, you uh, see Dennis Rodman there? <laughs> yeah. Right. Dennis. <laughs> What's up? That, <laughs> no, man, that was, that was What's actually, on? I was there in 2015. So I was there a month before, that kid Otto Warmbier was uh, held hostage by the regime there. Yeah. Which was like, right. it was a complete tragedy. I don't know what happened. I have theories about what happened to him, but uh, it's just still way, way too harsh of a punishment for a dumb college kid making the mistake yeah. and going oh, to yeah. North Korea and no, you know, yeah. misbehaving I, and getting that punishment. It was just a right. shame. Yeah. Yeah, because he stole a poster or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. And I saw people when I was there, they got into drunken stupidities and, you know, they very easily could have ended up like him. But again, the, is the is the punishment disproportionate to the crime? There, I think it absolutely was. That's right. Nikki, uh, uh, Nikki lived in South Korea for oh, the Oh, sweet. You know? Oh, it's awesome. The food. Yeah. I love Korean food. It's they're, they're awesome people for sure. Yeah. Very sad history, though, with the whole North Korea, South Korea thing, the division. You know, I, I like I said, just given my familial background, I've always tried to understand, you know, former Yugoslavia, like the word Balkanization literally comes from where my family's from. So it's like you try to understand why people split I can't, up. I can't, and, I can't tell by the name. Uh, yeah. what, huh? what, what are you talking about? I can't tell by the name. Not very Eastern European or anything. Yeah. But uh, but no, it's like you try to understand what's going on and why these things are happening and, and something that always, I was always interested in the whole Korea conflict and you know, why is the U S cool, there and dude. what's going on? Like, and my, you're, you're a fucking deep guy, man. Yeah. I, I, was way been, before I, mean, I say that history. like, dude, I'm nobody to say that you've been to fucking North Korea. You're a deep guy. Like, there you go. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, like I said, I wouldn't, I probably wouldn't do it again. I probably wouldn't be allowed in, but uh, as you know, now it's all they're they're locked down too. Uh, dude, I'll, I'll, I'll turn you on to, uh, there's some dudes that, um, they used to live in China. Like, uh, one was from Europe, one was from America, mm. the U S and they just lived in China and rode motorcycles everywhere. I do. I, I know exactly. You know who I'm talking about. A lot of why. And, uh, some of those guys. Yeah. They just, they rode their motorcycles and made yeah. content. They and made, they made videos. Yeah. There was the one guy, yeah. uh, serpent Z or something. He was from South Africa, I think too. Yeah, I know the one guy from America. They came back. Yeah, that stuff. I, I love. Yeah, they yeah they came back. It's uh, ADV China. 
Yep, that's exactly that's it. Yep. The, the channel. And they they went to the uh, North Korean border on yep. border on the um, China side. Oh, yeah. And you and see they, the North and they Korean filmed that. There. They, they went yeah. right up to the border. They filmed all of it. It was fucking mind blowing. Like, oh, wow. Crazy. Yeah, like, so. So yeah, dude, ADV China, check that shit out, guys. Oh, like so it'll blow your mind, like what these guys experienced in that country and and around I mean, that it's area. Just, it's an know? amazing country. You see, like China has so many different cultures and cuisines and everything, and it's just a shame that their you know their government is that crazy as it is. And you know, a lot of people I think yeah. just hate China here. And you know, not saying you shouldn't hate the Chinese government or whatever. I mean, they're they're not they're great, but, but the people are great. You know, like there's great the people there are that you know they didn't pick that government, I guess. Uh, especially not there. They don't get to vote. They just kind they, of yeah. Like, they have no choice. Here, now. You are in the government. You know, like this is they our, have no choice now. There's no choice. Yeah, it's crazy. So, but it's a beautiful place. I mean, I spent a few days in China when I was going on that trip, and I got to go to That's the Great cool, Wall man. and saw a little bit of that and wish I could have seen more, but probably never will get a chance to go to China again, given the way things are going. Maybe uh, not. Yeah. Yeah. It seems like at least for a while. Right. Out. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, the world's a crazy and big place, but, um, there's still a lot of mysteries out there, whether they be cryptid related or not, there's definitely intrigue. Yeah. And, and I think a lot of people uh, gravitate towards that. And I, you know, I, I'm all for it too. I love it as well. And, you know, I think Bigfoot is just one piece of the puzzle. Of what yeah. the mysteries of life? I don't know because and, because and it is so it, it's so mysterious, right? Yeah. It's the lack of knowledge. It's yeah, like that void. It's so like easy to want to fill, you know. Like and, and it's like fill, uh, you know, there's that mysticism. I guess the idea that oh, something is just out of our grasp. Like our world, mm -hmm. it's becoming more and more encroaching, and technology is encroaching. And then there's these things that are still just beyond. They're out of our control. It's almost like uh, yeah. you you want it to kind of weird stay away from civilization, you know, stay away from us because we destroy Run. everything we touch. We're like the opposite yeah. of the Midas touch, you know. It's like the destroy touch. Everything we we touch just turns to shit. But um, but no, yeah. So yeah, totally. Yeah, man. I mean, we we need a part two for sure. For sure, we need we need to dive into what like what you just touched on on Bigfoot. Like we didn't even get close to tonight and. I mean, fuck, dude, you went to North Korea? Holy shit, I, I want to hear about that more in detail. You know, like, yeah, for we sure. need part two, man. Yeah, totally. I'm I'm, I'm all for it. So all thanks right. for having me on. I mean, I'm, I'm glad you uh, you want to hear what I have to say because, uh, I don't know, I feel like I just talk way too much and <laughs> I talk people's ears off. No, no, it was, it was great, man. Like, I, I think everything you had to say tonight was relevant and and people were hanging on to every word, man. You didn't, you didn't overdo it at all. Appreciate that. Yeah, man. So, so yeah, I'm just going to wrap it up. <clears throat> and man, we'll have Alex back on. Like we'll bring the panel in, even though he's already talked to half of them, evidently. <laughs> uh, but yeah, you will, you will be interested in Patrick. When you meet Patrick Vaughn, you'll be interested in that guy. I promise you that. Uh, and yeah, there's a lot more to talk about as far as oh, I totally. Goes. Yeah. Like, uh, yeah, we'll talk more about that off air. Um, but anyway, thanks everybody for watching. Thanks for being here. I appreciate every single one of you. I really do. Um, even you, Matt. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, man. Thanks for watching. I'm just gonna wrap it up. Uh, I'm gonna play my in uh, my uh, show tag, and uh, you just hang out if you can, Alex. Sure. Um, yeah, it's a, it's thanks, only uh, about it's only about three minutes long or so. Sure. Yeah. No. Thanks for having me on, and thanks to the audience. You guys are awesome. I I know the feeling of having people in the audience. It's always fun that they have conversations and ask questions. So thank you mm -hmm. guys all for uh, for participating. Agreed. Thanks a lot, guys, and we will see you next time. Let's assume that you've got to this point in the video and you don't agree with me at all. Fine, but I guarantee that this video has been beneficial to you. It will, at the very least, have allowed you to compare your own argument to mine 
thus giving you an understanding of the opposite view of the argument. And, assuming you're being honest with yourself and actually paid attention, it will have strengthened your own line of reasoning in preparation for an intellectually honest counter-argument. Therefore, even if you don't agree with me at all, this video will still have been useful to you, even if it only confirmed what you previously knew. If I get defeated here, if someone comes along with a very good counter-argument that defeats mine properly, then great, we've all learned. And if I'm right, great, we've all learned again. But if we don't have the debate, because it's artificially shut down, or people complain so much that it persuades people not to take me seriously, we can't learn. We can't find the truth. So we will live in ignorance of the truth. It is therefore in all our best interests to have a debate about this subject. But if the academics or corporations like YouTube or the central state are not allowing the debate, or somehow find a way to call this offensive and take it down, then we won't learn and we will have a valueless interpretation of